are good. Let me make sure it pops up on, let me refresh. Pop and fresh. All right, you're good, man. Hello, everyone. It's time once again for a mystery commentary. I'm Captain Logan. I got Brandon Grimm here, who just now found out what we're going to be watching tonight. I don't know if you've even seen this. Have not. you seen this movie? <laughs> nope. I, um, this, is, fun. this is the way to watch it. Uh, and I'm also, of course, uh, streaming tonight with my good buddy DJ, my chat moderator and producer at the Captain Logan Show. Uh, DJ is producing for us tonight. Thanks a bunch, DJ. Appreciate you, buddy. Uh, he's doing a Superman thing. Yeah. He's, he's his Superman thing. S stands for hope. The audience has, the live audience has already guessed at what we're doing tonight because they could tell from the silhouette and the fact that I said it was a superhero movie. We are indeed finally going to tackle Justice League. We're going to do a Justice League commentary tonight. Uh, I thought this would be one of the last things anybody would expect uh, <laughs> after the last couple things that we've done, and but a thing that people have been requesting a lot lately and been asking for. Uh, so I thought now was finally the time. I went back and watched it again the other day in preparation for this. I hadn't seen it in a while. I uh, I had the worst viewing I've ever had of this, so uh, we'll see what it's like watching it now with you guys. Uh, I had the same thing with this kind of, well, not exactly, but kind of like I did with uh, a couple of the J.J. Abrams Star Trek movies. Uh, I saw mm. it once, and I knew it was mindless dumb, and, and dumb, but it was sort of fun, and I didn't hate it as much as I expected to, but I was really worried to ever watch it again. And then I watched it again, and I went, yeah, I didn't enjoy that as much. And then I watched it a third time the other day, and I was like, oh, oh, I see what everybody is saying now. Everything is relative, right? I think my initial response to this movie was, well, what'd you expect? <laughs> what, how was anybody surprised that this wasn't good? The, like, like so much in, turmoil behind the scenes doesn't even cover it. And, of course, we'll talk about some of that as we watch this movie. But, I mean, this is basically a movie made by two entirely different polar opposite directors. It would be like if, like, Steven Spielberg finished a movie made by, uh, like, I don't know, um... Na name a director that's nothing like Steven Spielberg. Like, uh... Uh, uh, what's what's it? What's it? Tarantino. I feel like if Steven Spielberg finished a Tarantino movie, like what would that look like, right? And uh, this is just a really bizarre, strange entity. And uh, at least I sort of could tell what was going on. It had to be a video game plot before we finally got to to, to that with with the DCEU with these movies. But at least I wasn't totally confounded. Like I don't know what's happening. But don't get me wrong. I mean, it's still terrible. Yep. So anyway, I uh, sorry. What are you gonna say, DJ? No, that's good. That was a perfect analogy. I feel like I'm. I feel like I fully understand you better than I ever have. <laughs> <laughs> I have been stalling so that folks will have time to grab their copy of this movie. This is not streaming anywhere, uh, as far as I know, for uh, two copies. for for free or with an account anywhere. Uh, yeah, I've got that DVD copy. Or no, that's not the DVD copy. What is that? This is, the is 4K. that a okay? This is the book version, which is really sweet. Oh, okay. Lenticular that they don't always. I don't do. have in this movie. I just have the the real slim down. Let DVD me pick release. a bone with DC real quick. They did these yeah, sure. releases, these beautiful lenticular releases for every movie in the DC universe until Shazam. So I have these nice, thick books that go right next to each other. They look really good, and then they just stopped for Shazam. I don't know. I guess they did that movie didn't make enough money to justify it, but a little bummed. A little bummed about it. They still did a lenticular, but it was just a regular case. Connor says, the way I see it, what's on the screen is on the screen. It's an embarrassment, despite how much turmoil was behind the scenes. Yeah, but we knew it was going to be. I'm just saying, like, pe people that were surprised by this, I, d I didn't understand that. There were people that seemed, like, sort of outraged. Like, oh my god, how did they let this movie come out? Yeah, well, they spent the money on it. Like, they, they were they were gonna have to release it. What are you, what are you gonna do? Um, I kind of agree with people that say that they should have more or less just let, like, you know, uh, Snyder put out the movie he made. I know he had to quit somewhere in the middle of making it, but uh, it, it, when Whedon got brought in, they changed a whole lot of it. Like, even with uh, with Snyder leaving, um, it still could have been more of the movie that he shot, and I still think that that would have probably been an unmitigated disaster, judging by BVS, but at least it uh, might have felt more like a straight-up vision, <laughs> a, a, a singular person's vision. Uh, so, yeah, I mean... 
but I don't know which of those I'd rather have. Like, I think that's probably more interesting. I always call BVS fascinating. I think that, that would be a more interesting failure. Uh, but at least with this, I was able to turn my brain off. And I don't say that like lightly. I don't want to turn my brain off. But this thing straight away says, uh, we're not going to be about anything. And I kind of appreciate that over a really self-serious movie that acts like it's the most important thing that's ever come out. And I can't keep tr up with it until what's what's that? It broke my freaking brain. I rather have Saturday morning nonsense than that. That doesn't make this better necessarily. I'm just saying that's I'd rather sit through that and that's just that's just how I feel after BBS. I wouldn't have said that if I hadn't had that experience, but yeah. yeah. Well, you ready? Anyway. No, I'm really <laughs> not. I don't want to have to watch this again, but we're going to. Uh, so if uh, if you don't have a way to watch this, the best advice I can give you is uh, eat the $4 and watch it through uh, an Amazon rental. Uh, kind of sucks that you'd have to spend that much on this, but that's the only other way I can think of that you could that, that you could easily watch it. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get this into it. The Brandon watched along commentary we've ever done because it's not on anything and people don't want to pay for it i am brandon are you ready i am okay we're gonna do this here we go get it to timestamp zero everybody please press play right now so brandon you and i saw man of steel together and reviewed it and loved it oh, wow. and every uh, uh repeat viewing i've had of that i've i've had more and more issues with it and i've well, had I gone back to a, it. a harder time feeling the way i did when i first saw it mm -hmm. it's not exactly what i thought it was and i latched on to some cool ideas that weren't brought enough to the fore the characterization really wasn't there i don't want to re-review man of steel again <laughs> right. uh, but it's weird where we're at now like just first of all it doesn't feel like it was seven years ago that was seven was years it really ago. Oh, yeah, man. 2013 and now uh we're even all the way past this movie where we've kind of put the DCEU to bed and we, we've hung on to the elements of it that are popular and that kind of worked uh, but more or less it's it's gone now um, we, we don't we don't really have a cohesive continuity and even going into Aquaman uh, this is a thing I hadn't thought about before really DJ but uh, Aquaman has his outfit in this that more or less is the one that he will get in Aquaman <laughs> I don't know how he had, and the trident too. I don't know why he had a trident. He doesn't have that at the beginning of Aquaman. Yeah. <laughs> so we're already retconning right away. So Brandon, you see how weird uh, Superman's face looks like right now? That's yes. because of the airbrushed uh, mustache. You probably heard about that. Whole I thing. have heard about that. <clears throat> Ponder in the comments what? says, "I'll say this much: I like. Have you ever fought a hippo?" I also like, have you ever fought a hippo? Uh, right away, we're setting the tone for a Whedon movie and not a Snyder movie. And there are places where it almost feels like scene to scene, yeah. we switch directors, right? Because this is going to have a very Snyder-esque opening with the really sad, broody, Superman is dead, oh no, what are we going to do? Uh, thing. Well, I guess after this teaser, but when we get, when we get into that, although even this feels more Snyder-ish yeah, than yeah. that, than that uh, I guess, I'm gonna call it a pre teaser. Where he like he DJ's like uses a <laughs> he uses a human being as like bait to to track a parademon to him. Professor Zoom says Cap just because BVS was divisive doesn't mean Snyder's Justice League would have been bad. It doesn't necessarily mean that, but I would have been really surprised if suddenly after uh, Man of Steel and and then BVS we had something like both coherent and not super uh cynical now this is i, I will hey Earl, I, he led that he stop the kinds of movies he was making i gave bbs way too much credit way too much benefit of the doubt the biggest issue i have the uh before i said BBS was oh it's not communicating things i think it's saying and after bbs i went i don't know if it's communicating any of the things i thought i uh, snyder is either really it's or stuff like or at least a lot of it was. Anyway, I will say I will throw out a positive, but this is not really for this movie, but just like this Batman in general is like this is how I want Batman to move. Like, yeah, super stylized and like flying around and flipping around and. And everything about this Batman, starting of course from DBS, is the Arkham Batman, yeah. which is awesome and really cool to finally see on screen. 
you know, this is where it's, of course, very CG, and it sort of looks like it's just in a video game, but I don't care. It's really nice to finally get the CA Batman that moves like this. You're absolutely right. And I say uh, often going all the way, DJ, to uh, the display he's got on his wrist in this scene. <laughs> I will say it is cool that they went and they built all of these suits. Like for real, like I was watching the bonus features on the Blu-ray today, and like wow, there can't. is a full cape. There is suits with full capes. Like sometimes they use, they have to use computer generated capes, but there are suits that are just completely finished, screen accurate, uh, except for Cyborg. But all the other ones have full suits, and they look really good. Yeah, guys, I'm sorry. The way we're having to shoot right now, we're working on it. Uh, my voice is going to occasionally cut a little bit now. I've gone back and re-listened to those and. I think it's listenable enough. You can make out most of what I'm saying. I'm, I'm sorry about that. We're going to work on it. Uh, but it's either at the moment uh, that or uh, major copyright flags and possibly getting the video blocked. Yeah, we're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place right now. <laughs> <laughs> just, I like just watching Brandon's reactions to this movie for the first time. Works on, uh, on DJ's computer and it's not working for some reason on mine. <laughs> yeah. So, Brandon, uh, did you see BBS? No. Oh, he hasn't even seen BBS. Well, that, no. this is going to be interesting. Well, yeah. I haven't seen BBS okay. since the theater. I only saw it once. Spoiler warning. Uh, Superman's dead. So I got that. Yeah, okay. yep. But I think you can just watch this without that. All you have to know is Superman's dead. It's fine. It's probably more watchable and a little more fun without that. I, like you, you may. What I mean is, I don't know if you would if you would catch as maybe you would as much of the really weird. Uh, like, like tonal back and forth with this movie. Uh, if you didn't just see what, uh, like, like really pure Snyder doing exactly what he wanted to do was, and then somebody else coming in and going, "That's dumb. I'm gonna get rid of as much of that as humanly possible." So it looked like a shot of Notre Dame with the S across it. This is very Watchmen. Well, yeah, and we had the. The uh, director of photography of Watchmen in the BVS. I don't know if he came back. From this. I don't think he did, but I don't remember. Yeah. Well, just the, just uh, the... I don't know. I don't know the background of this as well as I do with some other things. Uh, so I'm sure some folks will fill in in the comments. I honestly got really tired of hearing about of, of hearing the whole release of the Snyder Cut thing constantly. That I've just not really looked that deeply into this movie because it made me almost less curious. You know what I mean? Like. If the thing finally comes out, obviously I'm going to be really curious to see what it looks like, yeah. but that that's deafening and obnoxious, and I'm like, you know what, I don't even think I care anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I mean, I'll watch it if it comes out, but... I'm, Tom, time stamp, play this very much, it's 544, we're looking at a U-Haul truck. <laughs> we're looking at, oh, the dog is still there, that's, that stupid dog. Connor says that everybody knows Sad Girl Cover is a hate crime. <laughs> These credits are 100% Snyder. This man's death to Bowie and Princes with a recently dead man's song uh, playing is so off-putting. Uh, I didn't realize... I guess I had never heard the original. I didn't know what this song was. So now that you say that, yeah, that's maybe in poor taste. Uh, I didn't mind that song just as a song and as the way to open this movie if it was a Snyder movie. Yeah. Uh, I like how he opens his, his movies. Yeah, he always uh, does. That's why. That's what I was saying when I said it's very Watchmen. Yeah, and that's my favorite opening credit of all time. Yeah, this one's kind of sillier though. This is. I mean, this is nowhere near as good as Watchmen, obviously. <laughs> well, we're trying. Obviously, the big problem with this is we're retroactively acting like Superman was different. Was was a different Superman than he was, and yeah. that the which I'm totally world, fine with reacted to him uh differently than than they did i'm i'm not okay with i'm that, totally actually. fine because i don't care about continuity at all i just want this to be its own movie where i can watch it and be like okay so superman was like this and now he's dead and that's all i need to know i don't need to think about bbs ever again but but you do though here's why you're completely and a hundred percent unequivocally wrong dj <laughs> um if it straight up made Superman a completely different character, and then also everyone's acting like he was, that's fine. The pro I guess, for the sake of this piece. Yeah. The problem is you're still stuck with that stupid Lois Lane bag. We're still treating Superman like the only thing he cares about in the world is Lois Lane. The fact that after last movie, you got the sense that he would have become a complete fascist, horrifying dictator if something happened to Lois Lane, and then the thing that snaps him out of it when he's uh, evil, scary, back 
Like Superman is off is often and obnoxious. Mm-hmm. And so it, like it's, they're having their cake and eating it too, buddy. It's it's not we're forgetting continuity that didn't work. It's having it's it's having the audacity to act like that Superman was I I you know, really altruistic and somebody people really looked up to and stuff. Yeah, but they play that like it's he's just like like confused and like disoriented when he wakes up from the ship which is dumb and cheesy that like his heart shakes him out of it but like I don't know I feel like that's just this movie I just think that's still continuing on that really awful thread uh, um, like, and that's where I really want to know what Snyder's would have looked like because obviously you're putting that in the context of we've got a Superman that's at the end of this, you know, talking more like comic book Superman and finally talking about justice and stuff, and he smiles now <laughs> and he's got like a bright blue costume and stuff. Uh, it just it looks like the scene where he finally comes. Where, where he comes back to life is a Snyder scene or mostly a Snyder scene. Yeah, it is. I don't know that before, but I think it is. It is. I saw. I was watching the behind the scenes and they showed him shooting that scene. The blue thing is off. Oh, that's the worst. And it doesn't seem like just <laughs> he's out of it. It seems like, you know, he's supposed to be a twisted version of the guy from before, but the problem is, oh, you're not going to get this reference. It's sort of like trying to get, like, me. Archer at Enterprise, like, nah, he just acts like Archer, because Archer was already obnoxious and awful. Yeah. It's like that. Well, that's what it's supposed to be on, like, a cheesy script level, but they just play it like, I don't know, because I don't know why he just gets the feels for Lois and it snaps him out of whatever he's, whatever he's in. Especially because we never get up playing with them, and you never completely understand where that obsession comes from. You know, and I want to call it love and romance, but no, it's an unhealthy obsession. <laughs> I stand by that. Okay, I don't care how fast you are, that's not going to work. It's a machine. Yeah. Some of those bullets are going to get through. No kidding. It's just not going to work. So when she uses her lasso for the first time, she tells the guy that compels him to tell the truth. Does she have to say that? or like? No, it just doesn't when you touch it. No, I think that's for the audience's for the benefit audience, right? in case they didn't see Wonder Woman, uh, which was, you know, I mean, they didn't they didn't know this when they were making the movie, but I mean, that, that see, Wonder Woman's almost ubiquitous. Everybody saw Wonder Woman. So I, I, you said your wife likes this movie, right? She liked it okay when I showed it to her the first time. I can see why she would like that scene, because she likes just, I like that scene because it's just superheroes saving people, which we never get in superhero movies. Yeah. It's just like a bank robbery scene. It's fun. And this finally does that stuff. The problem is it's just kind of forced and it's it's so complicated. Like, first of all, there's a part of me that just doesn't even want to do this comic <laughs> here. You were so excited <laughs> about this last week. What happened? I, I was excited because I knew people would really want it. It seemed like a good idea. And then I had to do it. <laughs> So, but uh, but no, the the issue is, I uh, it finally is a like you know real honest to god superhero thing where superheroes are allowed to be more or less heroic. Obviously, we have to do the irritating like nobody gets along for kind of no reason thing first and all of that. Uh, but at least by the end, they kind of like each other and they're saving the world and uh you know the the the, the universe is rewarding us for doing the right thing and stuff. I uh, and. You know, I didn't like that this was a world that seemed to be so deconstructionist that it was just completely against that, like, like on, uh, like a like almost a fundamental level that like Superman is not cool because he's not an antihero. So we got to make him an, an antihero, but then kind of pay lip service to what Superman is supposed to be and pretend like he's not, even though that is what we're presenting. So the point I'm trying to get at is. Uh, at the end of the day, this is... I know, that's hilarious. That's, that's how hilarious. the greatest detective in the world figures out that it's Aquaman. <laughs> it's right on the wall. They painted it right on the wall. <laughs> yeah, and I, don't, and, and I don't know if that's supposed to be like an ancient thing or what, but like it's so uh, it's so in your face and like obvious everything that that's supposed to be. It's really funny. <laughs> it's like it came out of a child's like storybook or something. Yeah. Well, but I guess the point I'm trying to make real quick is uh, that... I'm of two minds about it because this is so completely contrary, except for the places where Snyder stuff got left in, to Snyder's vision, even though I didn't like his vision, that I just have an impossible time 
like seeing this as part of and I know you said you don't care about this, but it kind of matters, like 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 of, of what we had before, because we do have an ongoing narrative. You see what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. It's not just separate pieces. Like Snyder was trying to play the death of Superman as part of Superman's overall arc from from Man of Steel to this. So like mm-hmm. the continuity matters. It's still part of an ongoing story where this is the third act of a three act play, right? Yeah. Or the <clears throat> second act of another three act play third act didn't end up happening. Whichever way you want to look at that, that's great that you have that cup. <laughs> and that you're not like some other cup that makes me angry. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so, but but that also makes it impossible for me to look at this as things that are actually happening. It just feels like the most, like, manufactured, we all got together to make a movie kind of movie. And that's the thing that takes me out. Every beat of the way. <laughs> Nearly. Yeah. Uh, one thing, I, I'll get to this later, but one thing that doesn't work about that Wonder Woman scene before we move too far away um, is, like, the whole her whole arc in this movie. No, for sure that, that was Arthur Curry at, at first. When okay, I in that's there. what I was getting from that, yeah. Like her, I'm sorry, what's up? Wonder Woman's whole arc in this movie is that she's, like, been hiding and not doing anything, but then we open with her, like, saving people. So that's a little weird later. Especially... Uh, every, talk, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, especially because she doesn't really do it in secret, she, like, does her super arm blast and like probably blew up half the building and killed that guy so anyway uh everybody talks about the beard thing uh connor says okay so did bruce grow the beard super fast or wait a couple months to grow a boss beard and then go to see aquaman so he could immediately shave it off yeah i don't know <laughs> he has to have a super cool beard grow like that when he, when he meets aquaman the assumption i'm making because i don't know exactly how much time passes i don't think it's real clear about that uh, and it, of course, this is one of those movies that feels like there's a lot of stuff missing, but because there is, but uh, and then a bunch of stuff added. <laughs> the assumption I was made—I don't get as hung up on that as, as, as other people. The, the, Eric could not stop talking about that after he and I went and saw this in the theater. Oh, really? He was just on and on and on about the beard. <laughs> the assumption that I made was that a couple of months indeed have passed, and that uh, Bruce Wayne doesn't shave his beard because he doesn't have any reason to put on the bat suit in that in that period of time. I guess is the best thing I can come up with, uh, or that he wants to look unrecognizable when he gets there. Yeah. If he doesn't want people to recognize him as Bruce Wayne, maybe he maybe that's why he's out. I don't know. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't Hello, Matthew Pace. Uh, we got a quick super chat from Lucas Green. He just says, oh, thanks. how many streams today? Keep up the good work, Cap. Thanks. Uh, just one. We're doing this stream today. <laughs> yeah, I don't, is what we're doing. I don't know what that means. For a second, I was like, I was, I was, I was thinking back to earlier today. I was like, did I do a stream today? Yeah, I was going to ask you, did you do another stream today? Maybe he was just oh, asking so. genuinely how many streams today. I guess just one. <laughs> I have been streaming enough. That is a completely <laughs> fair question. Absolutely. So this is going to be, I don't want to say the beginning because there's already been some awkward dialogue, but this is the beginning of the really awkward, not uh, especially natural dialogue exchanges in this movie, particularly with The Flash. Although I didn't hate him as much in this last viewing as I have in the past. I don't love him as The Flash, but I know people get, like, angry about this actor. Oh, wow. I. Uh, but this whole thing with him and his, including Eric again, um, this whole thing with him and uh, and his father is really weird, particularly when you get to the end, because his dad's like, stop seeing me, uh, go live your life, don't be, uh, don't, don't go try to, uh, you know, solve the murder that I was framed for, yada, yada, yada. And he wants to go, like, get a job with the police department in order to try to do that. And his dad says, go live your life. And then at the end, he gets a job with the police department, and his dad's like, look at you go! And I don't, under- <laughs> I don't understand. That whole hand on the hand thing, seen that in a lot of... Yeah, Kelly, Kelly, yes, that's very cliche to do in these kinds of prison scenes. Mm-hmm. I... Uh, Kellen Rourke says, touch you. <laughs> Kellen Rourke says it's possible that Barry was supposed to have autism, and then Noah O uh, immediately follows that up with the Flash sucks so much in this movie I can't stand him. And I wanted to read both of those comments together because I think that that is a thing that they're trying to communicate that uh, is coming off to a lot of people as just an annoying kid who's like quirky for no good reason. Wow. Um, I like the idea on paper. I don't know if it's straight up autism or if it's just this sort of like neurotic thing because, and he explains it well enough toward the beginning, right? This Barry Allen, this is a new take on it. And yeah. I, I don't hate it on paper. 
It's just a performance issue for, for a lot of people. Um, the more I thought about it, the more I liked it this time, but I still don't love this actor. Yeah, I like um, it all. Well, go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll speak after you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm talking no, a lot. No. I was just the, the idea. When I get nervous, I talk a lot. <laughs> and this is a movie that is, that is weird and hard to talk about and makes me nervous. <laughs> I um, love it. So Barry Allen in this, oh, we're about to get to the cyborg stuff. The cyborg stuff is uh, the, the stuff that I think most works in this movie and, like, is legitimately pretty good. We jumped right over the bat phone, by the way. Oh, yeah, like the bat phone. The red bat phone that he calls. Yeah, uh, you know what he's in? He's in The Terminator, a movie you still haven't sat down and watched. Well, Terminator 2. Uh, but but anyway, uh, he's also a uh, character I like a lot in, uh, in in Smallville. Or at least I like his performance in Smallville. Uh, and he's in Eureka, and yeah, he's fantastic in that. Yeah, that's what I mostly know him from, actually. Uh, but anyways, so uh, the thing with this Barry Allen is that uh, he's supposed to be kind of scatterbrained and neurotic because he experiences the universe at a different speed to everybody else. And everything to him is just so slowed down and he doesn't know how to concentrate on anything and he doesn't know how to, man, I, this is the part about it I really like. Yeah. He doesn't know how to have uh, relationships with people properly because he can't get into the rhythm of regular socialization. That's really good. Yeah, I really, I mean, I'll, I'll give my piece on this. Like, I really like this Flash. I love the take on it. I don't know anything about regular Flash. I also get this out of the way. I'm not a DC fan. I don't know anything about DC. It's probably why I enjoy this more than most people that are okay. DC fans. Um, but I really like Flash, and this is an actor I really like. He's in a movie called Perks of Being a Wallflower that me and my wife uh, like a lot, and then we watch <clears throat> one of her favorite movies. What would you say? You mean the guy who plays Cyborg or his dad? No, I'm talking about Flash still. Oh, Flash still, yeah, okay. Yeah. So I like Ezra oh, Miller really? a lot. Okay. And, um, I don't, I've never seen him in anything else. Yeah, he's a really good actor. And there's there's some lines he's given in here that I don't think anyone can make funny. I think they're kind of like Whedon-esque lines. Um, but other than that, I really like him. But. Yeah, but not good Whedon-esque lines. I mean, I feel, it feels like, because, I mean, I like a lot of Whedon stuff. It feels like he had to kind of sit down and knock this out in about <laughs> three and a half hours. Yeah. You know, I think he probably spent less time rewriting the script than the entire script writing process for uh, Cabin in the Woods, <laughs> which was a pretty quick script writing process. I think this cyborg has a lot of pathos. I think this actor sells it extremely well, especially given that his prosthetic looks stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and he just does a fantastic job of selling it. Which uh, well, the, whole, hand the eye. The eye, it doesn't even look yeah. integrated. Like, it looks like he just put it on himself. I it, was thinking the same thing. This movie is looks so fan-filmy in a lot of places. Well, is, and I was going to say that at the beginning. The opening with the parademon, really fan-filmy looking. Mm -hmm. Well, what I don't understand, like I said earlier, is they built all the suits. Like, the Wonder Woman suit looks awesome. The Batman suit is the best Batman suit we've ever had. It looks so good. And then, like, but they didn't build any of Cyborg. He's just wearing yeah. pajamas, as he keeps saying on the deleted scenes. He's very mad, too. He keeps talking about how everyone's in these awesome suits and he has to wear pajamas, as he calls it. Um, but they didn't even build that thing on his face. That's that. There's nothing there but, like, a ping pong ball on his eye. And I just think, this might sound horrible to some people, I just think that that even more makes your character look like the token black guy. <laughs> like, yeah. he's, he's yeah. just here for diversity quota, and we're not even really thinking all that much about him and how he's going to look and how we're going to be. It, it might not have been that, it kind of looks like that. Because the only reason you go for Cyborg is because we don't we don't traditionally have a black guy on the Justice League unless you go with um in, in unless you go with uh, John Stewart Green Lantern, who uh, I I would have liked to have seen honestly. I wish that's what they'd done. But like I usually don't like Cyborg on the Justice League. That usually drives me insane. Like first of all, he's usually a Teen Titans character, and secondly, he's not the like the like stalwart larger than life. Uh, I uh, you know kind of epic tradition sort of yeah. hero that DC characters are most known for, and that's usually what the Justice League is made up of, is those kind of larger-than-life characters. And then you got, you know, uh, you know, uh, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, you know, these, these characters uh, that kind of still want to have a whole kind of passion for these beings, and then Cyborg? <laughs> well, they make a good case for it, because, like, especially in today's age, that Cyborg would be one of the most powerful things in the world. Yeah. Well, not just powerful, but timeless. Like, it's always been kind of timeless yeah. character. Uh, even Green Lantern, that kind of works, works with, even though Green Lantern is, is technology, because it's, it's technology that looks like magic. And 
Uh, yeah, it's that's that's fine. Uh, okay, so now we get to what is DJ likes to call him the most generic supervillain <laughs> in in superheroes. Why is he not just a guy? And and it drives me absolutely <laughs> up. It's the most, it's the weirdest thing to look at. It's the weirdest and, and choice. Think, and I don't think this is before this. There is an argument for it with Thanos. Uh, people argue with me on this. People don't agree with me on this. I think that there are at least shots in the uh, Avengers movies with Thanos gotten away with just prosthetics. And, and if you do close-ups on his face, maybe. There's an argument to be made for it. Well, he was prosthetics this, in the first Avengers in that little cameo. Yeah. This, I don't get it at all. I, <laughs> like, like, logic seems to be is giant, so he has to be entirely CG. But we have all these shots of just Ryan on his face. Like, is that CG? It's, it's just a guy in armor. You know, a, a two left. You look back. They got smashed. Yes. Boy. Yeah, yeah. It's rough being an Amazon. Man, I see. I like the scene. I like going back to Fem Themyscira. It's fun. It's a cool scene. Yeah, but they fight the most generic <laughs> villain you can imagine. Yeah, it's just a guy in armor. We've seen Thor movies. I don't know why they couldn't just put a guy in armor. Just I yeah, and I also think it's even worse because like the fact that he never feels like he's actually going with anybody on the scene does not help, of course. <laughs> like. The last villain we saw was Ares. <laughs> he just go into another dude with a who just constantly throws out like makes right platitudes over and Ares is kind of interesting, especially if you can tell this guy. Yeah. But like, he might as well just say like 550. Because every time he talks, it's just a, a, a different sentence. Yeah, well, his, <laughs> his superpowers are just like strength. He's just like a big brute. And also, the movie makes a point that he's not really the be all and all unto himself. But we never see that, even in an after credit scene or anything. It's like, you know, he's supposed to do the Thanos thing and build the dark side. We just get one token line about dark side. And then that's it. <laughs> and, he, and also, he keeps saying mother. You know, you know, dealing with the mother boxes as if there's going to be some kind of big reveal at the end. Make, like, forget everything you know about DC Comics. Like, just, just like, a, like, like a brand new, somebody that doesn't know this stuff and watches this movie. You might expect a build up to some like big, more powerful, looking, really scary villain at the end. Make mother, like, a sort of and he's it. Yeah, and he's it. He's it. It's like the opposite of BBS where we pull dark, uh, Doomsday out of nowhere. Here we, we don't pull anything. <laughs> we just stick with this guy. Connor, I'm doing this to myself because I have no shame. That's the answer, Connor Casey. <laughs> I knew people would watch this, and I thought it might be kind of fun for me and DJ to talk about it. And then I watched it again, and then I went, okay. Yep. They like it. They like you seeing you suffer. I am. So I like this idea, we'll get into it a little later, but like I like, I'm like I said, I'm not a DC guy, but I like the idea that there's like these ancient civilizations like the Amazons and the, the Atlanteans and also like a Superman, but he's on a different planet. But I really like that these two have been on Earth this whole time, like secret, like, and it's, it, it's super Lord of the Ringsy when they, when they're like, with this, like they pass this mother box on to you and this mother box with the Amazons and this mother box with men, mortal men. And then I don't understand where the mortal where the where the men put it. Like where did the Why does this have to look this fake? <laughs> I'm sorry. Like how how does like Stone's dad get the mother box? Where did they find it? Does it ever say? I don't know if they ever explained that. Or if they did it so offhanded I don't remember. It didn't stick with me, whatever it like, was. Did they just find it underground? <laughs> or is there like a, a cult of of men that have been guarding this since... What is the <laughs> impetus for this MacGuffin plot? Like, how did the boxes... Moreover, riddle me this. So, we, we make a big deal out of... Uh, it's, it's not what's inside the box. It's the box itself. Yeah, there's nothing inside it. Okay. 
<laughs> why is it called a box? I mean, why is it called a box? Because and not like cube a cube was taken, Cap. Oh, right. This is the cosmic cube, right? You can't. That's do a that. Marvel thing. Marvel has cubes. DC doesn't have cubes. <laughs> they have boxes. <laughs> So this is one of those things where this movie obviously goes without saying, especially because it's made by two different people and because it's by committee and and Warner Brothers is horrified it's not going to make money after BBS and all of that, uh, that it cannot decide what it is. It doesn't know at all what audience it's for. And it, of course, wants to make everybody happy, oh. but does that in the most superficial ways possible. Or Sorry, that sounds like a Whedon line to you. Does that sound like a Whedon line to you or where she says, jump like a cougar if you miss by a dime or some, some weird, like, that sounds like... 90 year old Ma Kent that doesn't sound like something this this woman would say it sounded really awkward to me sorry she has a couple of lines like that even in Man of Steel I think yeah, though they... maybe not but I felt like she was even a little bit kind of like cliche country <laughs> lady uh, you know farmer wife even in that yeah, it just sounds like she's so much older uh, than she looks she looks like she's like early 50s yeah, well, with everything she's been through, I guess I can sort of buy that she would age this month. You know, <laughs> she was the entire reason that Superman did not get killed by Batman in the last movie. <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm talking forget. about Ma Kent, Martha's not her. The <laughs> I'm Sorry, talking I'm... about Ma Kent, not a. Uh... No, she's oh, okay. I, uh, Remember, right. yeah, Ma... Martha is the reason. <laughs> Sorry, I was getting confused with this movie where Lois Lane is the is the reason. Yeah, well, she's still the reason for Superman to give a crap about anything in BVS. Don't get me wrong. I uh, remember she's the key. Lois is the key. Do you buy this? And then, given the uh, Lois that we've had so far, which is a good character in Men yeah. of Steel, do you buy that she uh, she just completely stops writing after Superman dies? I don't want to buy that, but at the same time, I so I used to say that too. I used to say that that we had a really good Lois and Man of Steel. The more I go back to that, the more I'm like, I don't really know who that character is over completely. You know, you know, overall, like I don't feel like she gets enough screen time. I don't feel like she's, uh, you know, completely drawn. So, with what little I understood about that character, and you know, I guess as much of you know a go getter and about the truth and, and and all that that she was, I want to say that, but I guess I don't really know like how she would react if she. Especially because I don't know her relationship with Superman well enough to know how, how that character would bring yeah, out to we that. Saw none of that. We see one scene in a tub. The big thing I wanted to complain about a minute ago, a minute ago when I was uh, giving a whole bunch of preamble <laughs> about how this movie cannot decide what it is, is uh, I don't like stuff like that scene with the lady on the news who just keeps throwing what out half Do we need that? In this what movie? was that? I don't even know wh why they didn't cut that. It was weird. Is he still figuring out how his stuff works here? Feels like he's unsure. Yeah, well, what you'll it. see, uh, Brandon, is that he doesn't have full control over it, and uh, it kind of controls him sometimes. I don't think that's what's happening yeah. here, but his technology is connected to the mother boxes. Yeah. Okay, which is a comic book thing. So we got a couple super chats. You mind if I throw one out while we're just looking at this lake? Yeah, thanks, <laughs> uh, thanks, chat moderator man. Uh, this is a big one, and I assume we'll talk about this kind of maybe at the credits or like throughout the film. He says, "What do you currently anticipate?" This is Logan Dodd. What do you currently anticipate for the future of the DCEU and the Superman franchise? Well, I've talked about this a lot on the Captain Logan show, so I'll keep this super brief. But uh, for me, I think the 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 successes lately have been. Uh, or the reason that lately Warner's has been more successful with superhero movies uh, has been because they've just been making movies kind of one at a time. And I think that they will, for the most part, continue to do that. So they'll have franchises, they'll have sequels to movies that work really well, but they're not going to be constantly trying to build to a larger universe into a big team thing like this. Uh, when we finally get to Superman again, my prediction is just like Joker and just like Batman, it will be another and my money is on the 50s or 60s. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. I could see us going back to that. So here's where it gets super Lord of the Rings. <laughs> like the, I don't, You're not a big Lord of the Rings fan, but there's this huge backstory, and they're like, we give seven rings to the, the Dwarf Lords, and nine rings to men, and <laughs> three rings to the Elves or whatever. And they do like that exact thing with the Mother Boxes. <clears throat> it's true, except it's, it's less complex and feels more like a video game plot. Yeah. I like these two together, though. I do too. I mean, there's major missteps in the in the story with how they handle them together. I yeah. think, but I like the I like the actors on screen. I'll say together. that. That's why I like this it's movie in the theaters. Picture. Is just because I like all the act. I know some people don't like Ezra Miller, but I personally like all the actors in these roles, and I just like them being the characters. 
for a couple hours. Like, like I, like I, like I said, I don't have a lot of investment or anything, but it's just, it was just like a something you just enjoy watching actors you like do acting. The biggest worry that people had when Justice League was announced, even before we knew what a train wreck BVS was going to be, was that. DC would just constantly chase Marvel and they would accidentally kind of, or, or maybe on purpose, uh, make carbon copy uh, uh, movies. And so doing uh, Justice League so early, people were like, well, God, we're just going to make Avengers again. Uh, there's our token Green Lantern moment. I still don't fully understand why there's not a Green Lantern in this movie. I'm sure there's background on that. Uh, originally, uh, as, as a lot of people know, um, and, and, and we used this as some marketing ourselves for the channel at one time. There was the whole Unite the Seven thing, uh, like a year before this came out. Which we changed. You got, uh, they changed it to they was changed that? it later to Unite the League. <laughs> Unite the League, yeah, because they decided it wasn't going to be seven. All of a sudden, it was just six, which must have been a real late in the game kind of change. Because like the movie is already in, it must have been filming. Maybe just pre-production. I would have assumed it was already filming at the point that they said Unite the Seven. I guess I don't know I don't that. Know how for they sure. could, that seems like a huge change that you move a whole character. A huge change, yeah. <laughs> that you're doing marketing that early, you, you'd be pretty confident. Again, we know how many we're going to have at the very <laughs> least, and then they go, oh, just six. Just the ones we talked about in BVS, and uh, and no and no Green Lantern. So I'm I'm assuming I think it's been it's been stated that the seventh the seventh was supposed to be a Green Lantern, but I don't know if that's yeah. True. I don't know how they could have introduced anymore. him. Like like they already have so much introduction. Three they're introducing three whole characters that we've never seen, besides those little like uh, characters that we saw glimpses yeah. of in the last movie. And if they wanted to make that about because here's the thing when. I know I'm all over the place. When Batman vs. Superman, or Batman v Superman was announced with that stupid direct-to-video sounding subtitle, uh, Dawn of Justice, the assumption I and I think a lot of people made was, okay, they're trying to take a different tack than Marvel did, where they had a slow burn uh, introducing a lot of characters and then putting them all on a team together. Uh, DC was like, let's kind of get out and up in front and do our team movie fairly early and then split a bunch of characters off. And I thought, and I, I've always said, I think it would have been maybe smarter, at least in hindsight, to have started with Justice League in the first place and then split everybody off instead of Man of Steel and then BVS. But I, what I assumed was that with that subtitle, the idea was we're going to kind of introduce the whole league in the BVS movie and somehow try to tie all that together and make it work. And then Justice League, we can really tell a story with these characters that you've met already. That's not what happened. D Dawn of Justice should not not just because it's a stupid subtitle, but it doesn't really have anything to do with that movie beyond uh, just this token, like, let's real quick mention all that all these characters are ruined and uh, kind of manufacture Batman running around trying to find them. Yeah. It serves the same purpose as the Nick Fury scene at the end of Iron Man where he just, hey, we're making a Justice League movie. It's coming. That's the only thing it does. Yeah, but it's in the movie and they treat it like a major plot yeah. point in the film. It's kind of off the beaten path and doesn't have a lot to do with what we're really looking at, except that Lex Luthor's involved. Um, so yeah. I say all that to say that this ends up uh, there it is. really just feeling like Avengers again, but uh, slower and duller and without uh, arguably you know, any kind of decent villain presence. And you don't want another team building movie right after you just did a team building movie. That's obnoxious. You don't do a Suicide Squad and then do this. <laughs> what? So, I like the idea of Flash's suit. I like that it looks kind of homemade. That it, that he's like just finding scraps and stealing stuff and like putting it together himself. But I just don't like the look of it. <laughs> careful look of it either and it screams we're trying really hard not to look like the tv I show don't get it like like I, I watched the costume designer on the blu-ray and they're like they, they kind of made it all like st strapped together like he's doing this homemade and it like, kind of looks like a a running sneaker as a, as a good thing and i'm like a running it doesn't look it looks like a running sneaker. that's right it does and it it doesn't that's not a good thing <laughs> i don't want my superhero suits to look like a a running shoe especially these weird like white straps in the front of it <laughs> Especially that. Yeah, maybe the idea is he, he is a runner. Maybe it sort of makes sense. A homemade <laughs> suit would have a running shoe. Like, I get that. 
No, I'm talking about like it looks like a running shoe, not that it has running shoes. Oh, you mean <laughs> the suit? The the suit <laughs> looks like a running shoe. Oh, sort of like the Amazing Spider-Man suit looked like a basketball. But I just I think the biggest problem with it for me is the head. I don't know why the head is shaped like an alien head. Especially from the side, it's got like the big alien thing coming out the back. I don't know. But yeah, <clears throat> I don't mind. I don't mind the speech he has about how the world's too slow and what is brunch and all that. I don't hate yeah. that. It gets a little more awkward as it goes along. Uh, where like he's supposed to again come off neurotic, but it kind of just turns into the, like cheap one-liners that aren't really funny. I don't know. It's not really working. I feel like. Tell me if you agree with this. And it's weird because I think were these were these the same year or this was 2017, right? Was it? I don't know. 2017 or 2018. It couldn't. It couldn't. No, because it was the it was the it was the year after BVS. Yeah. yeah. No, it's no, it's 2017. Same. This comes out the same year Power Rangers does, which is crazy. <laughs> and uh, I feel like Billy and Power Rangers was more or less what they were trying to do with this. Yeah, but what I like about this is that it's it's because of his powers. Like it's the Peter Parker thing, but like it's literally because of his. Like he's sure, but I guess what I mean is in having a pseudo autistic character because in that movie he is just straight up autistic yeah. in this if he's not it's an allegory for autism yeah, yeah. maybe and i'm just saying that no you're right well, it's like more like this ADHD, is, this right is, like you can't focus on anything it, it's yeah. sure absolutely but i guess what i mean is in in having like a condition like that uh, uh to to some degree informing your character uh defining your character Yes, this is this is cooler because it comes from his powers, I guess. But I guess the point I'm trying to make is, uh, this doesn't do as good of a job of making that character relatable and fun to the audience. Like, uh, almost everything Billy says in that movie kind of works, and I, I don't find myself like wanting to make fun of the kid <laughs> or feel feel like the, the movie is making fun of him or anything. And in this, he's just comic relief, and there's it, there, it's not as nuanced. And yes, I'm saying that he just the movie is not as nuanced as a Power Ranger. <laughs> that's a lot of why, what the problem yeah, is here. Yeah, it's just he doesn't get enough to do. Like that's just the problem with this whole movie is everyone. I don't know. It's it's not like they give someone too much to do. It's like that they all get an equal amount of nothing to do. Because there's just so much going on. <laughs> with that, I wish Cyborg had been our eyes in, yeah. man. I'm gonna go that far. That would have been cool. Never thought I could have been one over on the idea That's of Cyborg crazy just for you, yeah, the you one that. thing this movie does for me is that. And it's not good. It's cyborg. Uh, let's look at some more Yeah, I got a super chat. Comments. I got some more super chats. Um, well, Lucas Green cool. uh, left us a super super chat to ask this, which is awesome. He said, is it okay to ask a question not related with Justice League? Um, real quick, if you really want to, um, but I'm, I'm finding it difficult to get everything out that I want to say. So. And then this super chat from Dave Atkins, Brandon should play devil dinosaur in MCU. <laughs> what? Okay. You know who that is, Brandon? I, don't know who I do is. not. He's a dinosaur. I, well, I, I gathered that much. He's from the Savage. So this is, this is a couple scenes I don't know, ago. Tiaj Ones gives us a super chat, says, why did Steppenwolf come out of the boombox in Themyscira, and not one of the other two. I don't think the idea was he came out of the box. I think he just, like, showed up. He teleported him there, he just, I like, think? Yeah. I Does it gate a boot too? I don't know how he... Did. I guess I... I don't know what... Like, I, they, the whole idea is that he comes because Superman's dead, but I don't know, like, how he can just teleport anywhere. I guess he can. He does that the whole movie. Uh, if you glowed like Wait, he, he, he Oh, no, that is... Sorry. I guess that is the reason that he... I thought it was just because somebody turned the mother box on. No, they were just sitting there watching it, like always, and it just turned itself on because he... Oh, yeah. No, that's a stupid plot point where it's like, you, you don't you don't have anybody to, to protect and lead you now, even though that Superman was, like, super angsty and, and wandering around and didn't know who he was either. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, do you think they would have completely reinvented superman for this movie if it was the Zack snyder complete version like because it seems so tied to that no there's no reason to assume that because this was massively in production and about to start shooting before the verdict was in so why would he suddenly change his mind about the direction he was going no i'm saying doesn't make any doesn't make yeah, any sense that's weird what are you gonna say brandon I was gonna say first of all, he must take a lot of power if he's like turning off lights and things when he's standing around like on the street corner and whatnot. He, he must exude a lot of like energy and stuff. But also like if you glowed like that, wouldn't you try harder to cover it up? And you're just 
kind of walking around indiscreetly, well, he's right? He's got a hoodie on, dude. Yeah, but it's going through the hoodie. <laughs> like, I don't think he is all that concerned about people finding out about him. He doesn't like that he's even really alive yeah, he right, now. right now. This is ridiculous. It's almost a death wish. This is like a, a perfume commercial, like or like a. <laughs> A little bit, but I, I like how Aquaman uh, is hard for a little bit. He's going to pick it up. Right. And this, this really bothered me in the theater. Um, why did we get this awesome extended like Wonder Woman Themyscira Amazon scene when he steals that mother box? And then he steals this mother box. He just kind of pops in, grabs it, and leaves. Like, we get nothing. I know we were about to get Aquaman in the movie, so maybe they didn't feel like they needed to show a lot of this, but this scene's lame. <laughs> is uh this movie was a massive rush job because the movie that was gonna come out had been scrapped <laughs> and so they cut corners anywhere any way they could uh when you look at the insane uh ticket attached to this to this movie uh you know how much money it costs versus what you're seeing on screen so much of that money goes into stuff that you're just not seeing yeah. like this is a uh, like there are obviously uh, some things here and there that could not be done on a TV budget because they're holdovers from the big movie that you have this movie star thing. But the movie that you watched minus like twenty percent or something um, is is cutting a lot of corners and ends up. Yeah, this scene's just really lame and anticlimactic. It, like a pilot show that could get good by season or me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if this is a if this was a pilot to a show, this would be much more impressive. <laughs> yeah. Connor says three hundred million dollars. And I think we're seeing a full or less of that on the screen. Because I think the majority of that money went to a movie made for Nazi. <laughs> Because Snyder still swears that there is a, a complete or almost complete cut of his movie. Now, I'm sure that uh, special effects are not. That's probably why, why we'll never see it, because Warner's not put the money into that. But also, I don't think he wants to go back and show everybody what could have been when they're wanting us all to forget about this, minus the parts of it that worked for people. They don't want us to forget about Aquaman and Wonder Woman, but beyond I wanna, that, you know... I want to see like, when the I Snyder cut with... with uh... Cyborg just like in the motion capture suit, just running around. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that motion capture? <laughs> that that was the thing when we saw the trailers where I was like, "Wait, surely the effects aren't done yet." Like, why does Cyborg's face sometimes look like a special effect? And then I saw the movie, and I was like, "No, they're doing that too." Like, it's not every scene, but there are places where. You get close-ups on Cyborg's face, and it's partially CG. I'm like, why? I don't know why. He has like a bad prosthetic on his face, and then his mouth is not fully a real mouth sometimes, and I don't understand. Yeah, I don't know why they couldn't do a prosthetic for his face. But that's just how it's done these days. Like you see, Tony, uh, Robert Downey never puts the Iron a real Iron Man suit on anymore. He's just. Because I didn't watch the, the behind the scenes, so you're saying he's not wearing a prosthetic at all. No, no. He's not wearing he's any of He has a little ping pong ball so they can, like, gauge where his face <laughs> is moving. Um. <laughs> Those scenes were, I'm convinced of this then. Those scenes must have been rushed so hard that the special effects artists had, like, two weeks to do Cyborg. Because what it looks like is a really cheap TV prosthetic stuck to his face, and also his mouth is CG'd sometimes. <laughs> That's what it looks like. It doesn't even look integrated. Like if it's if it's entirely a special effect, why does it look like he plastered it onto his face? Not like it's receded into his skin. Yeah, you can look at. It. I'll send you some pictures of what it looks like. Look better. <laughs> and that's 1989. But no, not because it's real. Because it's the time on it. Well, like, yeah. I mean, it's really it has. To be what I'm saying is, there's all kinds of other things that are attached to people's faces. Like, okay, that looks pretty bad, because well, I can yeah. tell that it's just a really? thing that's stuck to your face. You're telling me that that's not a thing we stuck to his face? I didn't know that. So that's not exactly like the Zod. <laughs> where, like, he was never wearing that. Except, I couldn't tell. And in this, I can't tell, but I think it was something prosthetic. Which is weird. So why? Uh, the answer to 
man. And mother is her mother. And that's why he calls it mother. That's it. It's best. Okay. As far as I can tell. It is just... It's weird. New gods. Drop a new gods reference. Yeah. For Dark Side. <laughs> I like the way he says for Dark Side. Yeah, he's a, he's a good actor. That. Do you even know who who is the, who this is? I never looked that up. <laughs> I didn't know either when I was watching the behind the scenes. I was like, oh, that's him. Uh, Syrian Hines, which is a You'll name that face. I don't recognize. Oh, I do know yeah. that face. What do I know him I don't from? Know, but I know his face. Yeah. Uh, no, he's in stuff. <laughs> he's a good actor. I don't know what he's doing in this. Oh, I know him from Rome. He was involved. Oh, interesting. I don't know what I know him from. I didn't look it up. He was in Harry Potter, but I don't remember. I don't remember too. Uh, so obviously, if people are going to expect us to talk about this, good pick for James Gordon. Didn't matter. They didn't do anything yeah. with him. So he's really good. He looks good with the hair too, and the mustache. He has almost animated series here, except it's not quite a a uh, ice. The J.K. Simmons is playing Gordon here? Yes. Yep. Interesting. Or rather, he's doing Gordon cosplay in a couple of scenes. <laughs> because they don't give him anything to do. <laughs> I'll be proud of that. Anthony Cabrera says, Remember, Simmons got jacked for this movie. Do you remember that? Yeah, those pictures on Twitter where his arms got like really big for this movie where he's just wearing a well, coat the whole I time? I think the whole thing was like, he was just like, No, I, I just like to work out. And he was just, and people were like assuming that it was for this movie. I thought even he made a big deal out of it was because of this movie. I don't know. <laughs> he was in a big coat the whole time. <laughs> Uh, so this scene is awkward and uh, it just is hard to watch. It's kind of cringy. Batman, imagine the coordination Batman and Wonder Woman would have. To do. It'd be like, you and know, it, it, it's, it's like a practical joke on everybody. Like, okay, so uh, we're going to both disappear real fast. And then the Flash is going to be there. And he'll be like, what? This is the Flash. He's not the one that moves really fast. Enough. Really, really. Oh, God. That's still not, still not mean, as bad as. So that's what that feels like. No, no, worse than that. It's absolutely I worse than that. I completely disagree. That is the horrendous. I hate that so much. Of of everything, <laughs> of, of all of the insanity in Dark Knight Rises, that's your thing. No, that's not my thing. I'm just saying if we're comparing these two scenes. Man, Dark Cyber looks so bad. Okay. Uh, I'm not even talking about how it looks. I'm talking about just the design. Like, I don't like that it's just all oh, silver. Shit. Like, it's just all metal. Like, there's no, I like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just used to Teen Titan Cyborg where he has like more human parts to him and it breaks it up a little bit. I have an origin for getting the circle in his chest. Why do we have to always do I that kind know. of crap? Kind of looks a little bit better at the end when we have the circle, but... Did you just laugh at that? No, don't laugh at that. That's stupid. Why did I you know, laugh that's at that? I know, that's why I laughed because it was stupid. It's so stupid. It was stupid. Look, you're entitled to your opinion, granted, if you, th if you no, thought it was, was stupid. funny. But it's I was stupid. just like, why would they... Like, if I'm reaching, there's sort of a setup payoff thing with uh, like a, like a Wonder Woman and Batman parallel, where Wonder Woman has been in the shadows, sort of like Batman because she doesn't want to get anybody hurt, like Steve Trevor. And there's that joke later where he says, "Well, if, if you you know after all this is over, if you want to go back into hiding, but just come out when uh, people need you, like you have been, you can dress up like a bat, and I won't prosecute." Which I don't hate that line. That's kind of fun. Uh, and, like, I guess I could stretch and say it's setting that up, yeah. but it's still dumb, because how would they coordinate that? So Anthony Cabrera gives a super chat. He says, remember, this was supposed to be part one originally. That's right. I don't know how far into the process that was the case. But when we say this, we mean whatever Snyder was doing. Because this is now a completely different thing with a few of his scenes put back in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, like, and, like, Steppenwolf, I guess, was always supposed to be there from the beginning. The part two would have been him setting something up. Like, 
maybe we wouldn't complain so much about the Steppenwolf thing if it was all leading to a second part, and we weren't even doing it like Infinity War and Endgame. We really did call it part one and part two. Yeah, we had kind of this lame villain in the first movie, but that's because we're escalating to something bigger. Yeah. So he's afraid of bugs, but he's way faster than any bug. Like, he could take out any bug he wants. No, he's afraid of bugs because he, he runs fast and they, he runs into it. You know what happens when you drive a car. They get yeah, bugs all over you, man. <laughs> hey, they address this more than they address uh, Peter Parker in Civil War. What do you the mean? kid being dragged into battle and not knowing what to do. Yeah. No, and I, and I kind of like... That is very Whedon. That's obviously a thing Whedon must have written. Uh, but I feel like there are places where I'm getting kind of a spark of what a uh, Whedon Justice League movie unfettered that he did himself would look like. And uh, and, and the DC versus the Marvel of it. You know what I mean? Uh, DC is the place to have, like, even if it's Batman, you know, a, a superhero tell another brand new superhero, just, just go save one. Yeah. That, that's what you do with that. That's a cool scene. And I like, I like that. I like them together. Like I say, I like the actors. I just, I wish they had more stuff like that to do. Vitaly, would you say Justice League War is better than this? No, I would. <laughs> I think they're probably about on par. I think. I think actually, a lot of the things that I find cringy in this are less cringy than than a lot of stuff in that movie. Uh, but that's. I mean, the only thing I can give that over this is that it's not the compromised as it does have a tone, you know. Oh, Batman. You know, it's around. got consistency, even if I like the vision in the first place. I always have issues when someone super fast. If they don't have, like, the ability to dampen the inertial forces, they can super fast grab somebody and yank them <laughs> out of their, you know, time frame, you're going to have some damage. Yeah. It's going to bother even later when we do it with a truck. Huh. Uh, DJ, you want to go to uh, some more of the Yeah, I just got buddy? another one from Lucas Green. He says... It's another one earlier. We've been... Whenever we... That was the part one one. I read that one. He says... Uh, there was one about Gotham that never got read. Okay, I see that. I'll do that one in there. Not, not related to Justice League, but thoughts on the show Gotham. Do you like it and any past versions of any of the characters you like? Uh, I reviewed that show for a long time on the channel, and then I got really burnt out on it, and I decided to quit. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I like that show in places. Uh, it, it got to where it could not decide what it was, and it kind of drove me crazy week to week trying to decide, okay, does this know that it's kind of black comedy, 60s Batman, or doesn't it know that? Uh, but yeah, I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about do that. You, do right you like now. the bat spider? Like the bang. <laughs> the thing is ripping the wall of this crumbling infrastructure. Oh, oh hey, that'll <laughs> come back later, Brandon. Good eye, sir. <laughs> That's all I've been noticing is that like Batman puts his grappler right into the crumbling wall, and they're all climbing. And, like... But yeah, I, I like a lot of versions of characters in that show. I just don't always like the whole thing doing with them. Uh, but their return is pretty cool. Uh, their paint is just fantastic. Goodness. <laughs> Good one. Good line, Batman. Brought I technology. brought machine guns because I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> That's what... <laughs> Oh, nothing really to talk about. We're just watching a fight. Yeah, well, that's going to be a whole lot of this movie, so <laughs> strip in, everybody. Or all we can really do is go, did this part have to be slow motion? And, uh, I mean, I get that we're looking at a flash. Yeah. I like how he moves. I, I, I don't know how people uh, like that, but I like the, uh, the the electricity flying off of him. So, um, it's not that much different from CW, though, right? Like, it's kind of the same thing. I would know. Doing. I Question about the electricity. Is there is there a reason, like do they give a universe reason? Because I could imagine that, you know, its sheer fastness creates some sort of static discharge. Um, it's that and also it's some kind of it's something something special. Yeah, like he he okay. got his powers so, from just getting shocked by electricity. <laughs> so it doesn't really yeah. make sense. Yeah, I but I, I think there's some degree of tapping into the speed force that is creating the the lightning is that what it is or is it just 
it looks cool or you're like i don't, yeah, know. I don't know they, they explained something earlier on when he's explaining his powers but that's a that's a thing jeff johns liked to do a lot was uh put lightning whoever was uh, was was drawing his comics uh, at any given time always lightning all like francis manipal always lightning all yeah i think i think manipal now we're gonna get into we're gonna get into the end of uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles two. What is he? He knocks uh, out the wall. Is he super shredder? <laughs> no, he just he does what the turtles do to shredder. Real, he knocks out the. Is he super stepping? He wolf? knocks off the wall and then floods them. If I've got a villain in my movie named Steppenwolf, <laughs> I'm using some Steppenwolf. Well, you know Snyder would have if he had. There's going to be a Steppenwolf song in at least one part of this movie. Yeah, the, the Snyder Cut is just all Steppenwolf. It's like the first Iron Man movie except Steppenwolf songs. I would also, yeah, I would also avoid, but like trying to use them in sinister ways <laughs> somehow. I would also try to avoid any name of a supervillain, whether it's from a comic or not, that is the same name of a really popular pop band, I think. Ha! <laughs> Why does Cyborg look like he has that symbol in his costume? This... Like, the thing in his chest almost looks like a bat symbol. I don't know why it can't be the circle yet. It's gotta be that thing. At least it wasn't triangles. The, uh, the bat spider, as I'm gonna call it from now on. Flash because it's entirely possible that at this point you were already under Metropolis. You may not even be in Gotham anymore. You don't know. <laughs> Branding Gotham from Metropolis is stupid. Right next to each other. Gotcha. They're, they're, they're like the twin cities. And cities. Mother is calling. I'm pretty sure that it's daytime it's Metropolis, and if it's nighttime, it's Gotham. So, it's so in shots. Back He's back. Does his trident have four tines on it? Four? It has five tongs. Five tines? I think five. Call that a trident? <laughs> no. A trident in the movie. No, this isn't his. He gets the trident later with just three. <laughs> Even though I don't know where he's got that. He only has that because his name's Aquaman. Like, I don't know why he has that. Well, he, uh, what's his, Amber Heard, Amber Heard gave it to him. Oh, Whatever really? her name is. Yeah, there's like a line before... They would cut away where he was, I think, asking. Oh, I thought he just had it. Okay. Because they were in, like, the throne room or whatever. See, that cape looks so cool. All the actual, like, real, uh, like, plot points and exposition in this movie, DJ, happen, like, at the speed <laughs> you'd think you think you got to watch for him, you man. Know what I mean? you got to watch the movie as if as Flash experiences the world. Wait, how did they just get out of there? They climbed up. <laughs> they, just, they just climbed up. Yes. You know. <laughs> they're, they're stranded. Yeah, and then Gordon's like this. millions of dollars in, in damage. Great. Got to explain this. I was watching, this, my, at this. I was watching this on my uh, PS4 the other day, and uh, I accidentally knocked into my controller, and it started moving at 1.5 <laughs> speed, but I didn't notice it for like a couple <laughs> of minutes. Because at the at the exact moment that it... Because I didn't remember this movie all that well. And at the exact moment that it went to 1.5 speed, the Flash just started talking a lot faster. And I was like, oh, are they, like, intentionally speeding up the footage when Flash is talking to make it seem like he's talking fast? And then everybody was doing it. And then I was like, oh, I must be watching this at a faster speed. Do you know what, but that you know what country this is in? They, they mentioned it's, it's a, yeah, it's a Russian-speaking country. Yeah. I couldn't remember which one. Why is he setting up his, oh, yeah, that's right. He, yeah, like, Anthony Cabrera. There was the '89 theme. We're also. I don't know. I don't know why I haven't talked about music yet. I've got so much. I could spend the entire movie just complaining about the score. It drives me absolutely insane because it's awful. Uh, this is one of Elfman's uh, worst outings, and it's not his fault. It's probably called like a week before I saw the movie uh, to score this. I know it had a different score for a long time, and he was called pretty late. I'm pretty sure that's right. He's about to go. It's a bad oh, that's yeah. That's the worst. Thing. That sounds like a Whedon line to me. Yeah, that's terrible. Well, I, I don't know what it is with you and Whedon right now. Like, I don't like him. I don't, I don't know, like his stuff. About a lot. I don't know how you're just immediately like, like pinning on Whedon. Like this is a thing Whedon always no, does. No, that's like, what. It, that's the kind of feeling I have when I hear a Whedon joke that falls. So that's all I'm saying. Is that a joke? 
because I don't I don't see that as like it's like a thing that's supposed to be clever. I see that as we have to have stupid, clever like uh, explanations for things because nobody's called it a bat cave yet. So now somebody has to say bat cave like they came up with it. That doesn't seem like a weed yeah. thing. That just seems like a dumb superhero movie. I don't thing. even get it. Like, why does he say it's like a bat cave? There's like there's like stuff in it. There's like a whole computer system in it. It doesn't look like a. Also, if that's if if I'm right and that's what it is. Batman toward the beginning of the movie said Batmobile. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't. I just don't understand what they're trying to say with that. I don't think he's the one that named it. It's just like, I don't even know what he's saying. It's weird. Why else would he have that line if that's not what that is, though? That's what. That's what we always do in stuff like this. If it isn't that, I'm completely baffled <laughs> that's by a, that. That's line. where I am. I have no idea why he's like a bat cave. Like, what does that mean? Um, but yeah, so Elfman brings back the 89 theme, he brings back the John Williams Superman theme, and uh, it's all really out of place and takes me massively out. And, like, I have a different philosophy about that than some people, and then maybe even Elfman. Some people think that once you have a great iconic theme for a character, no matter what variation you do on that character, you should never get away from that theme. I don't like that. I don't I don't buy into that at all. Uh, I, I think that when you uh, get away from especially a particular continuity but uh even more so when you get away from a a tone and feel and a uh you know overall version of a character uh it's time to change the score you got to change everything about it because it's it's a different aesthetic uh and when he for this stuff which started in this insanely like like cynical and and crazy over the top place uh yeah you don't bring back those things this is if you're going to do it this ain't the place to do yeah. uh, so we have a super chat from Lucas Green from a while ago he says whenever we get Simmons he's always the mustache character in every hero universe Marvel, DC heck Megamind he was the warden <laughs> I did not remember that here's the whole thing about him calling her out for not doing anything for which I'm interested to see if they just forget this for Wonder Woman in the 80s, or if that's like a whole secret mission, like, is she, is yeah. she not popular in the 80s? Or did people not know her? With some of the shots we see in those trailers, I don't see how she's a secret. <laughs> it just seems like she's right out in the open doing doing stuff. Um, I think there is still every possibility that there is some kind of clever reboot that happens in that movie for that character. I don't know what, but I mean, there were those rumors for a long time that Wonder Woman 84 was the place where we would kind of do Flashpoint, and I don't think they're doing that, and I don't think they'll go quite that far, but I think that there's every possibility, I think it's really plausible that uh, that movie will not line up with this, and that Patty Jenkins has tried to come up with some kind of, uh, you know, loophole to get around it, uh, or we can just do what we did with Aquaman and just conveniently ignore certain things. I guess that's possible, too, because if you're technically away from this continuity, I guess you... I guess you can do that now. I have a question for you, since we don't really have anything else to talk about. I'm going to create something. Do you buy <laughs> that, given the character we like, that both of us really like in Wonder Woman, do you buy that even though he brings up Steve Trevor, and this is just a question, I'm not saying either way, I don't even know yet, but do you buy that she would punch him in the chest that hard when he's just a human? When he mentioned when she mentioned Steve Trevor? The idea is, now, the idea is supposed to be that I... Yeah. Uh, that he's, that Steve Trevor just gets her that, that he's just he's just pushed her that yeah. far yeah um i don't know, I don't know. it's yeah. hard to Does say she ever have a temper? i think gal gadot is the best that she's that she can with the material she's got here but i don't think i don't think she or really anybody in this movie is like completely consistent yeah. i don't know if that's ever a character we played with a with a temper like that but i could see it you know he died pretty horrifically <laughs> One of the things I have a hard time with with Bruce Wayne in this movie, I haven't talked much about Batman, is that uh, Superman dies and he has just like a complete like 180 <laughs> degree turn and he's transformed into a completely different character and it's real cheese ball. Uh, where like in that in that scene before where he's he's just trying to push Diana to get her to where she needs to be so that he can get away with bringing back Superman and stuff. Um, he still is is coming up with a contingency plan. We'll find out later that it's just bring Lois there, which is irritating. But um, 
but like he agrees with her that this is kind of playing God and going too far, but he doesn't see other way any other way around it. So he's trying to have responsibility. Uh, it's not a matter of like like uh, you know I I think I know everything that's you know what the right thing to do is, and so we have to do it my way. He just doesn't see any other way around it, and he I don't know he may be right whatever, and uh, but. It's just it's it's real it's real cheesy and sappy. Like he's he's trying to pretend like he's the Batman he was from the last movie, uh, but in fact he's like really found himself and figured himself out after all this. I need him and Superman to have more screen time last movie for for me to buy all that, and that's why I can't I I, I can't completely go with with you DJ, DJ on the like let's look at this as its own piece and uh, not worry about continuity thing because it's so informed by that I have to. And, I think that actually makes yeah. it worse because he's so the opposite of what he was in that. Like, no, it does make. That's it why worse. I don't even think of like I haven't thought about BVS since I saw it in the theater. So <laughs> I don't even think about that kind of stuff. But they keep reminding me of stuff. They keep bringing it back to me, even if I'd only seen it one time. I would still have that. Yeah, it's pretty forgettable for me. So. I don't know, Batman branding people and then murdering people, but everyone pretending like he's not, not unmemorable for me. Anyway, what ran? We were Batman, so that would be shocking to you. Superman died. What were the circumstances surrounding his... I don't want to talk about it. (laughs) Well, my my question is, was he in one piece, basically? Yeah, Yeah, he just got stabbed. Am I I expected... He got got stabbed. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Um, Am I expected to believe the Man of Steel gets stabbed? Okay. (laughs) Well, Uh, it's Kryptonite. It's Kryptonite. Okay. Well, uh, am I expected to believe that they buried him in the ground and they didn't like take him to a government facility to? Yeah, there's a lo- there's a line that Batman helped orchestrate it. Still, like they okay. thought that it was not his body in the casket, but Batman switched it. They sneaked that in. Yeah. Okay. And then Cabrera says, "Okay, the scene of the graveyard looks like a ZWC. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> it absolutely does." Which <laughs> always says, "I want Captain Logan to brand people." Oh man, with the G, <laughs> right? <laughs> We gotta, DJ's gonna what be you like, don't know is I've already got one of my... No, just D- kidding. DJ's going to go, man, I sure wish I never yeah, made that logo. I don't want to be an accomplice to your life of crime. Cat's just going around <laughs> branding my logo on people. I've already got one. So Lucas Green gives a super chat. He just says... <laughs> no! <laughs> he just says, one thing the Justice League can't save. This movie. LOL. <laughs> That's great. They need the uh, pink ass want to be just as well. Yeah, I like this movie because it's nobody knows it's does. inspiring. <laughs> it's inspiring all of our super chats to just be jokes. <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> asking us questions; they just want to make jokes about this movie. Oh, uh, that's fine. <laughs> feel, feel, feel free. Yeah, yeah, and and then and then we go back in here and see. We're in the score. We're constantly just doing the Steel uh, just like in. token themes. Because of where we are right now, that don't necessarily fit all together to make a cohesive whole. I mean, that I guess this score is a real good reflection of this entire movie, right? It's 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 a it's an incoherent. Yeah, well, I say I guess I should say tonally incoherent, tonally uneven, and all over the place. Like at least I can follow the plot because it's so thin and nothing. Yeah. But yeah, they brought back the Man of Steel theme there. The dum dum. Immediately, this is a better movie if I can play the action scenes in between them in a decent video game, <laughs> right? Like every scene feels like a cutscene. Yeah. This right now feels like a cutscene. This scene is the worst. I don't know why they. <laughs> like if they're. Oh, we didn't talk about the fact that Batman really has said if there's any chance. <laughs> We have so the only, the only right, yeah, where he said like almost the same line. Yeah, because Brandon, yeah. it was it was even uh, if, if there's even a fraction of a chance or whatever the line was, like two percent, whatever it was, yeah. uh, that that uh, that Superman, um, you know, might be bad or might hurt people or whatever. Uh, we we yeah. and now again, one hundred and eighty. If there's any chance at all that we can bring him back, yeah, that's right. Okay, uh, so the only. And there's this contrivance to make it where he has to touch it at the exact moment that it hits the water, so it's super dramatic. Why do you have to exactly when you hit 88 miles an hour? I get that reference, and I haven't even seen that movie. Ding. He's got obnoxiously expressed in every... No matter what the kind of... 
Just now it's got this insane scowl with lines a person's face could not even begin to look at the table. <laughs> Hmm. It has a look like plastered on it. Why do we need this ridiculous? Okay. It's a smile on your face and trying to look angry. It's like, I can't do it. I'm really mad. I've got a big smile on my face. <laughs> I'm angry. I'm bad. bad. <laughs> so, what? I, I Brace mean, yourself I, for this scene, by the way. Uh, actually, this would be the only scene I've seen, and I watched it at uh, Nebraska Furniture Mart in the electronic <laughs> section. That's amazing. Yeah. And I didn't know Furniture what was going Mart. on. Yeah, so this is the scene that Marvel always has to do, where they have to fight for some reason, just because he's he's like pet cemeteried. That's yeah. all. That's all they say is he's he's came back and he's he's all wonky. Could we try maybe? Before? Well, they didn't. They, they have the mother box. Well, that's true. Is that was that their impetus for getting the mother box, or they just realized that they had it, they could do this? Yeah, they they just. They, yeah. I missed that. Part. I can't remember if Cyborg. Yeah, Cyborg enough, brought like, the box because he didn't want him to get the last one. <laughs> suggested let's do this. Was it Batman. Oh, I don't know. That came up with the first place. Like this will work because Cyborg, Cyborg was was, uh, was against it, right? It, Wonder Woman was against it. They had to convince her. Yeah, you just woke the dead. Like, come on. <laughs> I do like Aquaman in this scene, like freaking out. And fight cyborg was, was, was right. but no. Um, <clears throat> so much. This movie has that problem, and I'm I'm working on a rewind for Robocop too, which also has this problem. We have all these scenes that change status quo and feel like they're going to be the story for a while, like we're building to something. And then we just solve a problem real fast the one and the next thing. Almost like we're making just a whole bunch of, like, uh, episodic episodes of television and streamlining them, like, string them all together and making a movie. Uh, could, couldn't this have been made a story? Not just, like... Or, or go the complete... Because this movie's so silly, I don't even think we yeah. needed an explanation for why I came from. I feel like Superman could have just showed up in the third act and I would have been like, okay, that's this movie. <laughs> Because <laughs> I don't buy you the World Without Superman stuff at all. Like, Especially because he starts resurrecting at the end of BVS. For a completely different I will reason. Say, if, if he comes back and he's fighting them for like scenes and scenes and scenes, like that could be really annoying. But maybe you could have... I don't know what it would have been. It's hard to do this kind of thing and make it and, and make it smart and make it compelling. But like, it's love, man. Love saves him. Well, and, and obviously that's sap and horrible... <laughs> But, like, forgetting how exactly you get him out of it, I just think it, it, it would have been nice if this felt like a threat for any amount of time. Okay, so he... Where yeah. it's like, what if we brought him back and it was like, oh, no, we've actually created an even worse problem than we had, and now we have to deal with this for a while, and maybe, no, Seth can write it right now. It writes itself. <laughs> and then, uh, Seth gets farther in his plan that he should have because we made him make a mistake and try this, but, like, we are playing on, and then maybe we just kind oh, of... So we have sort of get locked uh, but we really shouldn't have done this. His eye is too far over his <laughs> yeah, head, this, and it's this, this part's actually funny. So, yeah, no, I, it's oh, also my. insane for just like this scene <laughs> because we wrote this. I mean, I don't know if this, I, I don't know how much this scene is still, but like it's and, and maybe he's stuck with it because it's here already. Yeah. But the part of it is, it's crazy that we worked on a movie. Where, uh, you have a character that. That uh, is easily brought back to life, and there are no, and that's fine because uh, there there was a huge point made in uh, Buffy and Angel that bringing people back from the dead is hard, and there are huge consequences, and it's never a good idea, and you should never do that. That like death is part of the natural order of things in the universe, and like Wayne seems to like, be uh, very passionate about that. So, yeah, so this scene is is Snyder. I saw them shoot this whole fight scene. What if that didn't there? <laughs> so, well, real quick, one thing I... Snyder, everyone gives him credit for shooting great action, and that's true in most of his movies, but I hate how he shoots Superman fight scenes. His Superman fight scenes are mm -hmm. horrible. Like, BBS, that whole fight scene we're building up to the whole movie is horrible because, because Superman is so strong, he makes him so strong that, like, the fights are just, like, 
one punch, and they fly across the whole screen, and then it's just like a headbutt, and they fly across the whole screen again. Like, there's no choreography at all. But anyway, what I was going to say is this is a yeah um, a Snyder scene, and I don't understand it because Snyder shot BVS, and at the end of BVS, the the ground start the ground starts shaking and rising because he's about to burst out of that's the ending shot. He's about to burst out of the thing, but then he also shoots this whole scene. Sorry, I just hit my mic. Where they have to bring it back this way, and they have to dig him up. I don't understand. That's yeah, not a problem I with Joss Whedon. Or the whole never behind the scenes thing. That was just in both movies. No, you see rocks rising up. Yeah, because he's about they, to take they, off. That's what happens every time he takes off. That's why I would be fine if he just showed up out of nowhere in this silly movie. <laughs> but he should have just been there from the beginning. Yeah. And this... If you so, were so, so what you were saying earlier, like... Because this movie's so silly, like... If he was just disoriented and fighting them, but it's the way they play it. Like he's not disoriented at all. He's like he seems like so calm, and he and the fact that he can call back to the "Do you bleed?" line from the other movie uh -huh. is what, what makes it horrible. That's what I'm saying. Because it's like no, he is the he's the evil fascist version in the a nightmare scenario in BVS until Lois snaps him out of it. And that's why I'm saying that remains a problem, and part of the reason I can't just look at this as its own thing, because it still is consistently saying, if there is no Lois, he is a crazy person. I don't know. But he wasn't... He was, why would Joss Whedon not cut that line? Remember who he is, and it's like he, he wasn't remembering who he was until he saw Lois, so yeah. Like, no, that's not what's going on. He, no? He's talking, he, 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 he knows that's Batman. The, uh, that's what it's supposed to be, but then they... Uh, right, and then, then they throw some other stuff in there that kind of makes it You would think that bad. that would be the first thing. As soon as Zack Snyder got off the movie, they would cut the Do You Please sign. <laughs> they would <laughs> just like, cut get that, that out of here, yeah. that's horrible. <laughs> this is funny. No, you're right. I guess it plays differently without that one line, but like... Yeah, he's just too... He's too calm and collected he should be more like like a hulk he should be hulked out and also i yeah, that's a good point too i know i'm gonna upset people who really like bvs when i say this but and and like everybody's entitled to their opinion but i am gonna say oh, i don't know how a lot of people uh especially of course people that don't like bvs uh thought that somehow Justice League would be like this wonderful masterpiece if only we got to see the Snyder cut when you have one of the only scenes we know for sure Snyder shot with Superman holding Batman by his face in yeah. the air and he doesn't die. Like that's cool. That's extreme, Logan. <laughs> so there's no way that is somehow the only crazy thing that happens in that movie or the craziest thing in that movie. You were looking at what that movie no, would yeah, have like been. J Gordon would have got like his limbs ripped off and stuff. <laughs> No, but that 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 scene was great. Um, when when he was when they were in the field, and uh, I was watching this with my wife on Friday, and she says you smell good, and she's like, there is no way he would smell good. He's been in the ground for what six months, a year? How long has he been dead? Long enough to decompose. Yeah, him. long enough for suicide. <laughs> like he doesn't decompose because he's Superman, but he still hasn't showered in a year. Why would he smell good? That, so, yeah, I don't understand that whole thing. I guess because he's Kryptonian. The sun gives him smell good powers. I'm sorry, what? Do you like this Alfred that shows up in this movie? Well, again, he's not given anything to do. A lot of people now say that he's their favorite Alfred, and I just don't get him on screen long enough to say that. He's a great choice. Yeah, he's just my favorite actor, although now, but he's not. Although now all you can see is Ozymandias after Watchmen. Yeah. And it's hilarious because we're, we're looking at a movie that's allegedly made by the guy who made the Watchmen movie. Crazy. Uh, and then and then the guy who played Ozymandias in the TV show, who was way, way better casting than the one we got in the movie, which was a huge step, is in this as Alfred Pennyworth. Did you see the... These are I never could have imagined I would ever be Did saying. Did you see the... Uh, Sorry, there was like a news article about um, who's the guy who's playing uh, Batman in the next movie? Yeah, yeah, what? It's not what is his way. name? Anyway, um, Robert Pattinson. He, yeah. he did like an interview where he talked about the, this pasta that he makes that he that you can eat in your hand. Like he's he that's what he's huh? working on in in quarantine is he's like making pasta and like putting sugar in it in the is microwave that... so he can just hold it. And um, there was a 
I just gotta mention this because I think it's hilarious. There was a Screen Junkies video where they were talking about that ridiculous interview today, and um, and uh, they were talking about that's Batman in the Pattinson uh, verse where he's just gonna be like obsessed with pasta, and then he, he calls Alfred Alfredo Pennyworth. And I thought it was really funny. <laughs> okay, that's kind of funny. That's cool. Look, this is kind of like the '89 Batman. He's got just like a suit of armor over there. The Wicker Man. <laughs> So, uh, this is one of the better written scenes in the movie, I guess. Uh, everybody likes to talk about how it's weird that Diana goes from that last scene and cuts to now she's wearing a cape draped over <laughs> her for no reason. I don't know why she put that on to walk into this room, so clearly something is missing there. This is their, like, foreplay they're doing where they gotta dress up. It's like the, it's like oh the, <laughs> it's like the Watchmen <laughs> scene. No, 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 no. That's messed up. Uh, I, I'm with you though. I think they have a lot of chemistry, and I think if this had continued and they wanted to put them together, it would have been it could have been really good. Yeah, I like them together. Just the, the actors. I don't. I mean, I don't know anything about this character, Batman, except that he's old. And it, you, you saw the one token line where he's like, "Remember when they just used to use exploding penguins?" <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I I understood him to some degree last movie. He was just you know bent and broken and didn't believe in anything anymore. And that you could do things with that with Batman. We just didn't. And then uh, he he uh, wanted to take out Superman, and Superman had the same. Uh, Superman's mom had the same name as his mom, and so now he trusted Superman and thought that he was this big great beacon of hope because he uh, sacrificed himself by getting stabbed by a spear that Wonder Woman could have easily used to kill Doomsday herself. <laughs> and that now makes him, that gives him hope for the world again. I what, don't know you why. The, the score, one of the worst things of the score was they, they used the original Superman theme while he was like crazy evil Superman. Why? Why <laughs> you first hear why it? did you do that? This should be, or where, I don't know, when, maybe when he comes back, if you're going to do that, show it there you know what's funny smallville did that too where the, the first time you hear it it's like it's like really ominous <laughs> and kind of twisted the use of it but like it knows it and it kind of weirdly works there it, they he didn't put it in a minor key he didn't do anything with it it was like it sounded heroic <laughs> what so there is a deleted there's one there's one deleted scene <laughs> There's there's one deleted scene on the uh, on the Blu-ray. It's him in the Fortress of Solitude getting his suit back, and then he goes and um, meets Alfred, and that and then Alfred tells him where they are. It's like a super short, like thirty second scene. Um, I don't know. I guess they cut it because they wanted that to be more impactful when he when he comes back at the end and just like shows up out of nowhere. It's crazy to imagine that Whedon shot stuff that also got cut. Well, I think that was I think that was uh, Snyder's scene. Well, that might have been a Snyder thing. But what I'm saying is, I wonder if that happened. Oh. It's crazy to imagine that there may have been things that even Whedon shot that then they went, nah, for time or just some, <laughs> you know, yes, like, well, this really messes with the with the with the timing and the pacing of this. Yeah, to cut reshoots would be just horrible. We spent extra money on this, and we're gonna cut it anyway. We're gonna cut it anyway. Yeah, where you pretend like somehow you're still making a piece of art, not a patchwork way to uh, salvage an absolute mess. It might have been in the trailer, Stephen Murray. I don't know. I didn't see the trailer for this, but yeah, he, he just... You're in a truck! Keep driving! Yeah, no kidding. He just walks into the, the Fortress of Solitude for a second. Gets the suit on. This, this movie still does have the Snyder problem in almost every scene, even though Whedon directed a lot of this, which is characters do things just... Oh, and now it sounds like the, 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 the soundtrack... To Field of Dreams. But anyway, um, you have characters who just do things for the sake of dramatic effect. That doesn't seem like a natural thing they would do at all. Keep driving the truck to get to the person you're trying to get to. Instead of stopping well, halfway see, there and then running to him. I mean, that's, why? It's kind of tragic because like this tries to stop driving you just get out and disbelief. I can't forget. He's got all three. That's weird. But... Praise to the unity. Okay, so like maybe I could make the argument that he wouldn't have gotten to this point if they hadn't brought back Superman, but the movie doesn't play it as a mistake or as a 
consequence of their actions, right? It's like that's just what happens next in the story. Yeah, it seems like he was going to do this anyway. Nope. It's not like he was waiting. Well, well, right the third like, box? I don't remember. Oh, no, that's the one of the worst things. He just teleports in and picks it up while they're fighting. Like, while they're... Oh, yeah, behind them, they're fighting. No, they're not even fighting. It's the end. It's like it's like he's already talking to Lois, and they're just standing there. They're just standing there. And it's weird. He's like, he's like, whoopsie. And he just picks it up and leaves. And they're, I'm like, you just... But again, I, like, so that just happens because they're stupid. Yeah. I, but but I also still don't think the movie is even trying to make you think that that's supposed to be like like you know a consequence of them bringing man back from the dead or anything. Um, why is Batman a hundred percent right and one percent? She's warning him about uh, doing something because he's Batman. That, she, that gives you more power than anybody probably should be allowed to. Be. I mean, again, I, I know that he says later, you know, you were right, that's why I had a contingency, but because of what the contingency was, it's stupid, so it just plays like, no, nah, Batman was right, it was always a good idea, no problem at all, because your heart's the right place, and Batman has been, Batman's soul has been saved by Superman, so he is entitled to resurrect him, and he's right about everything. That's what's going on. And there's the Bat Whale. I love that all of his, his mech things in this are animals. <laughs> It's kind of like a whale. A bat whale. And the bat spider. And the mur the bat bird murder machine there. <laughs> the bat tank. This is the cheesiest scene. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember what happens? Feels real obligatory. Well, yeah. Unfortunately, I watched this again recently. <laughs> so this is this will prove your. Um, earlier from Brandon, when you were wondering the the rules of the of the whip, or not the whip, yeah, the lasso, the whip of the whip of truth. <laughs> da, 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 da. What? <laughs> Tell the truth. Oh, I did see that other movie, and I just <laughs> 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 But yeah, you always have to have this scene this is the, yeah. where, Sorry. Really, where the really macho guy, you know, kind of shows his heart of gold and they do it in, they, they just, they just make it a big, uh, you know, comedic this moment. Is, they make him the, this is the, relief. the Raphael scene in the horrible TMNT 2014 movie where they're falling and about to die. At least, at least time is not moving at a different speed. But he's talking. For them than, ever, than everyone else. So he just. <laughs> He, so what I got, he, he just let out his heart because he was sitting on the, the yeah. lasso of truth there. Right. Okay. But, but, but uh, DJ, it is the same problem as that. You're right in that we haven't spent enough time with this guy <laughs> to get to even get enough of a sense of he is, like, real... I mean, I get that he's macho, but, like... You gotta spend more time with him before you can really like find it endearing or even laugh at this guy is finally spilling his guts because he's a, he's like a man's man he doesn't talk about his feelings like I just spent enough time to appreciate but that. Cap he drank a beer while walking in slow mo he drank a beer while walking in slow mo and the waves were crashing around him that's all you need to know about it. Well, he's dude uh, bro he's dude bro so I don't like this Batman and he lit so can I ask a question about the technology of these boxes? No, no we, we won't answer. We can't answer, man. They're not boxes. Well, it, are, are they biological in nature? Uh, uh, actually, that's, that, is, that is an interesting question. I can kind of help out a little bit. I don't know a lot about New Gods and stuff. It's just Jack Kirby, um, man. But they... Because look at that. That was biological. Yeah, and, and probably... So the boxes uh, are... Aren't they part of the anti-life equation? Or is it just the dark side's always looking for the anti-life equipment? I forget. But I think there is a pilot. Because they look like old Betty Vane. Yeah. things. It's like a leaf. Giant leaf of... Uh, yeah. Almost more like a brain or something. So, uh, Batman having stupid god looks through. It's <laughs> dumb. So you just have that <laughs> in his mouth. Yeah, I don't like this suit. This suit looked... I liked his earlier suit. I don't, I don't like the armored version. Well, 
I mean, I'm not even complaining about the suit so much as he's got freaking goggles on. I mean, it makes sense. He's going to be fighting an alien invasion, so he's going to need a little bit more protection. Like, why aren't they just part of his power? I don't know. Why does he have to have totally thing? It's really he didn't have time. He was pressed for time, Cap. He didn't have time to, to invent anything. He just had to grab some guns. Which I said, I'm stepping and stopping this in the boxes. I don't think it's just a little bit of I think it's just like... like the, well, I have no idea, honestly. I don't really know. Yeah. So maybe he's just drawn to the, like a like a like a son to a mother type of thing. Just he's drawn to like his power. It's a Norman Bates. It's a Norman Bates thing. Brown says, you can't Batman with goggles would have been so cool in the nineties though. Well, that's the problem <laughs> with it, right? It's the, that's Schneider to a T. Like this would have been so cool when I was a kid in nineteen eighty eight. I get to live out my <laughs> fantasy, man. Oh, he's got a crowbar. Um, it's only you gods to the DCU on its own. It won't matter. It will either stand completely on its own and not mention anything from the other movies, or it will take what it thinks it needs to from the movies that either the ones that we're currently making or inform the ones that we've made to some degree, but it will ignore everything else. Like, we're going to continue, I think, to live in this weird limbo. If anything present day, if it wants to connect up at all with our man or uh, one woman. Yeah. Uh, until a complete full on reboot if, if such a thing ever I think it will always be there will always be baggage from this stuff, stuff, stuff forever Cap is leveling this or, uh, Batman is leveling this Russian city don't blame this on me do not blame <laughs> the destruction of this Russian city on me oh he's, he's made her he can drive backwards this is what really happened <laughs> Six. <laughs> See, that's why it's in this uh, alleged uh, Snyder movie. It's, uh, this is the kind of thing you would think looks so cool in 1986 when you were a kid. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> Eric thinks that's the funniest thing in the world. Whenever Aquaman does that yell thing, he does. But anytime he says "yeah," or he goes "woo," yeah. whatever, like, <laughs> just surfing oh, on the God. Batmobile. Um. This doesn't feel like we're in a Russian city. This feels like we're in the hell from Constantine. I forgot to say the And it worked in that because that's all supposed to feel a Titan and feel like a hellscape version of the real world. It's supposed to be the real world. And it doesn't look like it's really there at all. And I get the disguise red, but that's not enough. Um, my this man. is where we have Aquaman do a sky fight scene. Ooh. <laughs> my man. <laughs> I'm a little bit behind you, sorry. Oh, okay. Dude, yes. <laughs> a lot of people like Aquaman. I'm kind of of two minds about it. I, I don't think it's the direction we should have gone in the first place. Snyder has the same thing he does with Superman. He doesn't like the character that much in the first place. The difference is I don't have the emotional attachment to Aquaman or the knowledge of Aquaman that I do with Superman uh, and he's against what Aquaman stands for so much as just it's not during that Aquaman wasn't like a drunk deadbeat guy who's like kind of bro dude he just seems like kind of an idiot uh, but he's endearing enough in this movie like as his own character like, I think Momoa does a good job with him he's kind of fun yeah, yeah he he's doesn't seem scene, as like, dumb flash. as they make him later in, in his own movie like, he just seems like he's having fun in this movie. That's true. And I like things about his movie. I mean, I don't think... It's got, it's he's got, got kind of a Human Torch issues. thing going on. Where he just likes that he's this awesome god power dude. Yeah, and that's refreshing in this. <laughs> yes. There's something about the Flash and the time. The other kind of thing about the character of the Flash and the He's supposed to be like... The Flash. Oh, okay. Well. First, we always see the spawning the flash. flash. Because speed is not a substitute for strength. Right. In like no, we, generally and... we don't have a flash with Oh, no, that, that's so, something that we do all the time. It's horrible. At the end of Age of Apocalypse, we have Quicksilver, like, punching a Apocalypse around. You remember that? Where he just, like, punches them, and he runs over there and punches them, and then, like, the big 300-pound guy is just, like, flying around. 
Oh yeah. I don't know no, why we do that yeah. with super speed. You would like break your hand. It's, it's a thing when it's for- in, I'm thinking more in comics. We don't usually play speedsters like they can lift it a lot. Like a, it's usually yeah. just just because you can move you fast doesn't mean your hand so wouldn't you break. <laughs> yeah. Like you. Well, I was. Uh, it's also. Really, I'm going to mention this earlier. It's super on the nose that Stephen Wolf is trying to create something called the Unity, and this is a team-building movie, and it's about bringing these characters together and making them family. So it's like, Unity? So, like, what does Unity really mean versus, versus Steppenwolf's, uh, like, really twisted, perverse version of it? That's a very weak notion that fleshed out could have been okay. I also just think it's so surreal and bizarre, looking back on this now, that that we had to go to the guy who made the Avengers, the movie that we were trying to recreate the success of without people telling us that we made the exact same movie, make our Justice League. That's insane. That's crazy. And it, especially the ending where they're just fighting a bunch of alien bug things. That's a really good point, yeah. Does it work like in Avengers where when they kill Steppenwolf they all die too? Or, do, or are they still all around? Um, I don't know if they even really give you a sense of what happens to the parademons. They just thought they're everywhere. They gotta hunt them down after this. Oh. Yeah, he just rips them apart. He is really obsessed with this mother. <laughs> Mutali Sor, DJ Brandon and Cap Unity. Form the form the Unity. Yeah, see, we each have mother box that we like hit someplace, and uh, if anybody ever gets their hands on one, the three of us will come back together. Okay, so now we got the we got the Superman theme. Superman shows Ooh. up. All right. So Superman gets to save the day at the end of the movie. That's uh-huh. Superman, that's right. Yep. The suit looks so good in this. Uh, the I suit. Love it so much. Is blue now, which oh, I really, really appreciate. But that's all I'm going to say. I still don't lie. Um, I mean, I've never hated that suit. Don't get me wrong. It's just if you're going to finally do or, or try to at least get away with like full on Superman, that's not you know as as as, as broody and conflicted and, and crap. Like, give him a real Superman suit. Give him some shorts. Give me like make, make him Superman. I don't know. Uh, see, I don't have that because I didn't grow up with Superman, so I don't. I don't have any attachment to under. I don't know why people want him to wear the underwear. It looks goofy to me. It looks very bizarre without it. it it's you need something to break it to break it up. Just the 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 one. I don't know how the underwear is sillier than a unitard. Like you need something to break well, it up. That is a unitard. It's the same thing. It's just gray. It, it that works better when it's all black. I'm telling you, when it's like a bright color. I I, I, I don't know. And so yeah. I don't think that suit even looks as good as it did when it when when the when the color was seeped out of it. Uh, even though I didn't like that we did it that way, you know what I mean? I don't know. I like it a lot. But you would. The point I'm making is you wouldn't design this suit to look like this uh, if you weren't going to put it in a darker Rudy Superman movie. He, he's super strong. I think. I like they they did something that's really cool. They no, but if you went that fast and you had that kind of momentum. But he didn't start out with that momentum. He's just able to push it. Like, yeah, if you if you ran into it really fast, you're gonna blow a hole in the thing. Sure. No, no, but if you got if you had super speed and you got your feet moving really fast behind something, even at a standstill, I think you'd still eventually be able to push it forward, right? You might. <laughs> Wouldn't that initially give you the inertia? Uh, not. I mean, not exactly. I mean, I don't. I don't know anything about physics. We hung on that scene of that girl very long. I don't know why we hung on that long. Ooh. Go kill him with that laser vision again, right? So, Cyborg got pulled apart at the leg, and then they just kind of jammed it back on. <laughs> and it like, that was kind of interesting. Pop it back in, man. It's like he uh, dislocated his shoulder. Let's see. Nanobots. I don't know. 
Well, he did just like materialize a kryptonite key out of his hand earlier, so apparently he can just like form whatever. So I Man, saw what that, was he and it, like, <laughs> it was a perfect key for the computer he was using to bring you know Superman back. Like that was weird. And why would you? Why would you use kryptonite? Did to you bring ever Superman think you'd see this life? cap that that cyborg and Superman would have to team up to save everyone? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then in the next movie, they get fused together to create a new villain named Cyborg Superman. <laughs> they just, like, form together like a Megazord. See, they did something... So what... You know the, <laughs> the like, shininess on his suit? Is I thought that was, like, digital, but that's not digital. They actually made, like, a chrome metallic um, undersuit. And then when you stretch the material over it, you can see like the, the metal shining through. It looks that's why it looks really oh, cool. Oh wow! Is the same true of Aquaman's suit? Because it also has that shimmery thing. Uh, they didn't mention it on the deleted scenes. I don't know. Okay. Would you just stop talking, Steppenwolf? <laughs> he, he, Cyborg said, "I don't even understand the physics of how my toes hurt." That's not physics. <laughs> no, that's psychology. Like, Basically, because you don't have toes. Yeah. But, right? Yeah. It's like, or does he have toes just... on one side or something? I don't know. I don't know what Cyborg's anatomy is exactly in this. Oh, by the way, you guys, I have the figures here oh, no. on how well the uh, Steppenwolf specifically action figures sold. Oh, I thought you meant um, you had the figures. Many, I was like, well, you bought those? The, the <laughs> Figures, uh, they sold five. They sold worldwide. So they sold five Steppenwolf back. <laughs> That's not many. Why they did they kill him? Because uh, they could smell fear on him. Oh, He's now right. afraid. Yeah. So I guess they kill him and then they all get sucked up. This <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll pay attention. We'll see where they go. I know. I think they all get uh, sucked up. I think they actually get shot. They all, yeah, gets they all get sucked up. That's convenient. That bag. Yeah. No, I, yeah, but I mean, to be fair, it's convenient in all the Marvel movies where we do that too. Yeah. But yeah. Well, actually, in the Marvel movies, they didn't get sucked up. They just all shut off. So there's just parts of them That's everywhere. Right. I mean, any anything where we we come up with a convenient again posing for a picture that nobody <laughs> took. Um, having a convenient uh way to just get rid of all the minions. Oh yeah. Had to get that in there. Uh huh. Guy had the money shot. I was talking mm -hmm. about the booyah line. Oh, that's a little too. bit. Yeah. Of You're behind me. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. Good job. But you know, he delivered it as well as he could for. Oh yeah, not he's great. Like, feel, and like he's just really good. And a lot of people said, "Well, yeah." And I would have said this before this movie came out. A lot of people were like, "Well, yeah, this movie didn't perform. We'll never get a cyborg solo movie now." I liked him. <laughs> I would actually go to that. I mean, I would go anyway because it's a superhero thing. But like, I would maybe want to go to that. Like I said earlier, I think he's got really good pathos. Uh, the idea of this kid that was supposed to die in this accident was—it's very Robocop. Like he survives, but uh, how much of him is still himself? And uh, he's connected to this alien thing, so he's not even fully in control. And it, like that's all potentially really interesting. We don't get to spend enough time with it, but. And he's consistently characterized throughout. So Bannon saved the family spot. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Nice. With, with a... And, and, and then he just says, I, I bought the bank. And remember at the beginning of the movie, he told Flash that his superpower was being rich. There you go, man. See, consistency. That's a callback. <laughs> it's set up a bit. You know, really good storytelling. All it is is a good set up and pay off. Okay, watch this. Somebody tell me what I'm missing here. So he gets a job at a crime lab, which his dad told him not to do. Like, like, don't go, don't go work for the police. Isn't it a police crime lab? And then he's like, I got a job. No, he's he's like, yeah, well, he's you go. He's at the lab with uh, with Victor Stone. He got him the job. That was, oh, is that yeah. what it is? Uh, oh, so he's not working for the police. Okay, never mind. I retract what <laughs> I said then. I missed. And that. this is bittersweet. It's basically the Star Labs thing that he does in the TV yeah. show. And this is. Like, hey, the big round table, we're going to have the, the mansion, Hall of Justice, and it's never going to happen. So how come how come Lois didn't have, like, major questions on how Superman was just suddenly alive? She just shows up in the battle, 
you know, and convinces him that, you know, he's Superman again. And she's not, like, asking a million questions, like, how did this happen? Well, I'm sure and, Batman and, explained it to her when he said, I need you to come in and, and stop him. Yeah. Uh, but Anthony Cabrera has a related question, Brandon, which is, so do they explain how Clark came back from the dead to normal people? Yeah. yeah. So, to the rest of the world, it should be like... I didn't even think of that. It should Definitely be like... Alive. But it should be like Reign of the Superman, right? Oh. Where everybody's like, can we trust that's really Superman? Is right. it really him? I don't know. Maybe it's a imposter. So this is what I was talking about earlier. Like, this is the same kind of thing she did at the beginning of the movie, but it was saying that she wasn't doing anything. But she stopped that those mobsters in the bank and everything, remember? Yeah. So I don't understand why that's different. Um, no, it, it is it is different she to be talk fair. to people. Uh, yeah, that's the only difference. No, no, no. So, so she she says to Batman earlier, uh, "I always was there when I was needed." But his point was, you weren't a leader. You weren't out in front. Yeah. You weren't public. I see that. that makes sense. And and again, that's them saying Superman set the example, but he didn't. He wasn't there long enough to set an example, and he was always, like, he seemed to only also come out when he was needed, too. And even then, very begrudgingly much of the time. I don't see how he's any better than Wonder Woman. He's clearly worse. I do like that that relationship is, uh, between them is, is, is established that Wonder Woman is essentially um, female Superman, like, you know, in a really good way. I don't mean that she's like an offshoot of Superman. I mean that like she stands for a lot of the same values that Superman does. And in this universe is a much better Superman than Superman. And this movie knows that. Like we knows. It kind of sucks though that like a- after Wonder Woman where she learned this lesson that she could be an inspira- inspiration to people. Um, then she has to have yeah. Batman just tell her to do that. Like that's kind of obnoxious. Nikki, and that does suck, and it's just because they're stuck with uh, what Steiner did in BVS. Because Jenkins wouldn't have done that; yeah. uh, she would have been a public superhero after that movie, uh, even after what happened to Steve Trevor. I also wanted to mention, by the way, we always have to do this, and I don't know why people seem to care so much about this and think it's really just like who would win in a race between Superman and Flash. Who cares? Um, but we do this in everything. The CW shows uh, do this with uh, Flash and, um, well, it's even dumber there because I think they probably do a race with uh, with Flash and Supergirl. I don't remember, but I'm sure they do that somewhere. But it's even stupider, DJ, because they do this after the first crossover with Arrow and Flash, and it's can Flash. Outspeed an arrow, <laughs> <laughs> it's so dumb. But even um, even Superman the Animated Series had a really early episode where I think the first superhero crossover Superman does before you get to Justice League DJ is with the Flash, and they do an episode where Superman and Flash I have this big race. But it's not like uh, it's not like a token scene like this. It starts the episode and it's like a, it's like a race for charity or something. It's like they put together an event and then it's like you know who. who, who, who that I like okay, but then after that we just keep having to do it all the time. It doesn't seem fair that Superman should be able to fly. <laughs> no. Wouldn't that That's... automatically be faster than running? Because you wouldn't have to like keep making friction on the ground? He's now a <laughs> Oh, no, I'm kidding. I'm sorry. What, 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 so right before that this scene, makes me feel like movies are Superman you know, reveal himself to, you know, to be Superman again. But that showed me another major problem. Oh, this was the trailer song. Do you remember that? I didn't see the trailer. What? We brought Superman back from the dead. That is... That can be understood in the context of Superman. Alien. I basically... Well, I'll, give, I'll give them this over other adaptations of Death of Superman and even Death of Superman. I understand how he got resurrected. <laughs> I actually... Like, that's not complicated. And I actually get how that... Anyway, I'm sorry, what the I... No, 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 yeah, yeah, I don't know. Oh, Hold on, 
one sec. Sorry, Cap, I can't hear you at all right now. You're just cutting out really bad. Don't know why. Then you're fine. I just wanted to make sure that you came back before you said some said a good point. I cannot. Yeah. Oh, I, there, I heard that. Yeah, I guess just keep talking. It's coming back in, in waves. Well, at least that didn't happen until we got to the credits. <laughs> yeah, it's been cutting in and out the whole time, like they've been saying, but it's uh, it, it just got really bad right there, so that's why I felt like I needed to say something. Um, importantly, we should mention that Whedon uh, was supposed to write and direct a Wonder Woman movie in the 2000s, yeah. and it's really weird that he comes in to save this movie and he finally gets to write some Wonder Woman. It's just really strange that that, that, that yeah, happened the way it so did. it's so bizarre, this whole situation. And I never read that script. I don't know if that's available and, and if it's possible to, to read that, but Warner Brothers didn't like his take on it, and they fired him, and then they just didn't make that movie, and uh, they ended up going the direction they did. And if that movie had been made, I wonder how things would have would have gone. You know, I wonder if that would have been their springboard for a shared universe. Because uh, I think that was... I don't remember the timeline now. Do you remember, DJ? Was that, like, wasn't that before uh, Just League Mortal, which almost got made? Like, they actually had pre-production to make suits for, and then it, and, and it cast everybody, and then that didn't end up actually getting made. But I think the Wonder Woman thing happened even before that. Yeah, I I have no idea. Stephen Murphy, was this anyone else's first viewing besides Brandon? Yeah, we'll see if anybody... Oh, uh, Psycho Reviewer says it's it's his first viewing and he understands why people hate it so much. Just remember, too, if you watch a movie for the first time with us, it's going to be very difficult for you not to watch it to some degree through the lens that we're seeing it in. Because you're, you're getting the input of the film and what we think of it all at the same time into your cerebral <laughs> cortex. Yeah, and both of us had like a more, um, this is just fun, turn your brain off cartoon movie before this last viewing i think yeah and i think it was because it was it was hard for me not to come into it with uh expectations informed by bvs even knowing the background even knowing that this wasn't going to be a, a full-on snyder thing um and even after one woman was really good yeah because i knew who was initially involved in putting this together and i knew that this had to be an absolute train wreck there's no way around it. So just the fact that it was coherent and I could tell what was happening got me kind of jazzed. So e even Snyder says that there's a Snyder cut of this, right? Yeah. yeah. So he ha he's taken Snyder's a picture crazy. of the reel and put it on Twitter. Oh, okay. Like, like, he's got he's got proof unless he wrote something on See, a reel. See, this is what I'm wondering. Is Snyder crazy enough to keep that rumor going just because no i think that's i i think there's truth to it okay uh, it's impossible to know how much of a movie there is mm -hmm. but he claims there's enough footage that they could have made a cut and we'll probably never see it again because you have to finish the effects there's no way those are done sure but i, I and feel because like warners is not going to want to revisit this i think that's one of those things though that people would want it enough even without the effects just to see what it would have but been it's also like weird that they would finish editing it like, yeah but but they would never put it in. sure there'd be no incentive to do that except that it would make money because yeah. so many people want to see it i think a lot yeah. of people that hate this and and hate bvs would still want to see it because <laughs> of curiosity i um, but I can see how they would be worried about what it would do to their to their brand, uh, and in in just revisiting this and like if that ever comes out, it's going to be years after we're completely beyond all of this. We would have had to completely reboot, or they would have to get out of the superhero movie making business before we would ever see that. I would think. Um, if I'm them, like I get that there's a market for it. I get supply and demand. But if I'm Warner Brothers. Right after Joker makes a billion dollars, the last thing I do is put out the Snyder Cut. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be a down the line, like a, like Superman 2 situation. And remember, that was 1980 to 2005, 8? Mm, wow. Whenever, whenever the Donner Cut came out, I don't remember. So there were at least 20 years in between. That's crazy. And, and it wasn't completely finished. They had to use... 
quite a bit more than that. Yeah, and it's it's not it's still not a definitive cut because there's just not quite enough there to make what what feels like exactly what Donna would have given us. <laughs> and it doesn't fit with the first movie because it has the same ending as the first movie. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, guys. I also want to see that. I'm just saying, realistically, if you're Warner Brothers right now, why on earth would you put that out? So I didn't even know about this scene, and later I heard um, I saw an interview with the guy with the guy that plays Deathstroke, Deathstroke. and he said he played Deathstroke in Justice yeah. League. I was like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah, and, he, and it was big news when he got cast, and he thought he was going to get a solo movie, and that's one of those, you know, 30 projects that was announced and never came to fruition. Uh, I've heard a lot of people say this. Robert Wilde says the most likely place to see the Snyder Cut would be on HBO Max. I guess if it was going to happen, that's probably the only the only way you'd get it. But... people to sign up for... When you haven't seen BBS, so you haven't seen this insane Eisenberg Luther, and you haven't seen him go ding, 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 ding. He, 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 yeah, he, that he, that, he, that he, guy should have been so doing fun. it. So like, oh yeah, he always does that. That's that's the real Luther. Just walking down <laughs> the hallway. I also wish we'd brought back that that Zimmer score. Bum, bum. That, 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 he, he's, that guy's pretending to be like Luther. That's yes, not actually. I, I got that. Um, but walking down the hallway, I would have really loved. Bum, <laughs> bum, bum, bum. That's a crazy yacht. Man, he had to shave his head you know just how, for the scene. Yeah, you know, yacht, you know, yachts are always named. That's actually the name of Luther's crazy yacht. It's it's a crazy yacht. Okay. <laughs> uh, I will notice that Mercedes must have paid out the wazoo for a couple of product placements of their cars earlier. <laughs> yeah. There's There's a lot of Thank you. We're glad you're here, Brandon, for noticing things that we don't care about, like cars. <laughs> well, Isn't you wonder what drove up in a Mercedes. I'm sorry, buddy. You're not pulling off the bald head. Yeah, it sucks that he had to shave his head again just for this movie. <laughs> what a, yeah. For a little end of the credit scene. And everybody freaks out at uh, League of Our Own. Of course, we had to we had to say that. And then I, I like I can't hear that and not just <laughs> I know. The 80s. That's what I thought. Of. Ninety two. Like, that movie came out the year I was born. I can't do it. Oh, okay. I thought it was late eighties. All right. I much prefer Eisenberg in Zombieland. True. So um. Social network. There we go. I cannot believe they left that uh, after credits. I would have, I would have not done that because there had to have been a fear that this would bomb so hard they wouldn't be making a sequel. Surely they're thinking that as this is being released, right? I have no, I don't know, man. Who knows what they're thinking? Yeah, cruel and unusual films. I think they, they nailed it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can't believe that's the name of that of that production company. Cruel and unusual. Yeah, it it was that absolutely. <laughs> oh, weird unusual. movies anywhere. My my app immediately started playing the deleted scene of him right after the movie ended. Oh, strange. The bonus features are included in there. Well, guys, thanks a bunch for watching. Um, I'm gonna have You're to welcome. go ahead and get going. Um, pretty quick. Do we have any other super chats that we didn't get Hold to? Hold on, dude. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I have to say this real quick. In the deleted scene where he's walking and he sees um. He gets his suit. The black Superman suit is in the scene. We didn't even talk about that. The, bl the black co the, the black costume was supposed to be in this movie, and I don't. Nobody knows what the context would have been. Everybody's confused about that because we know that that the first scene where we see Superman was Snyder. Yeah, he shot all that, so, so that he he didn't come back with the black suit on. I don't know. Yeah. So is the lowest thing added and not at all Snyder at all? Or does he put on the black costume later for some reason, even while being a good well, we don't guy? Know if he ever puts now, it don't, on. Now, don't get me wrong. The black costume is good guy Superman in the comics. That's what he puts on when he when he gets resurrected. But he comes back wearing. I it. wish I could take a screenshot of this, but it's of course not going to let me take a screenshot of a movie. But when he he yeah. walks into the to the Fortress of Solitude, there's like the Zod suit over here, and then there's the black suit over here, and he walks past both of them, and then he puts on the blue suit. So maybe he never puts the uh, black suit on. The black costume is still the biggest mystery of the movie. It's so bizarre. Yeah, it's really strange. And what's also odd is there is foreshadowing to it in Man of Steel. Because we have that black suit in that dream, uh, sequence. dream sequence with the skulls. Well, not really dream sequence. It's that it's that weird thing where he's like speaking telepathically to Zod, but but it's all dream it's all dreamscapey. Um, and then there's actually a physical. Yeah, watch one. the watch this deleted scene if you can. And it, he just walks past it. It, it. It's not doing anything. It's just sitting there. Like, oh, that's like so a Power weird. Ranger suit in the background. 
You know what that makes me wonder? I wonder if he was... Now, again, I know he wouldn't have come back wearing the black costume, but it makes me wonder if if uh, the black costume was, like, on the Kryptonian ship, and if, like in the comics, he comes back with something to do with the Kryptonian suit, uh, uh, ship and not related to the Mother Boxes. Like, I wonder if Snyder's resurrection has nothing to do with Mother Boxes. I don't know because he's st- well. He still comes back. Yeah, he still comes back in that same spot in Snyder's version, but we don't know. He comes back but in we that don't know spot, how, yeah. but there's but there's no mention in that scene that it was done with mother boxes, and that mother box grab at the end of that scene could have very easily well, been a well, reshoot. Was like I bet that entire the mother box at the beginning of the fight. I don't know. It's so weird. Oh. Okay, well, maybe not. Maybe not. But maybe the mother boxes are connected to the ship. Like, like they do something with the Kryptonian ship, with the mother well, boxes, that might be maybe? How it I don't works know. works this time, because when Lex tries to bring back Zod with the ship, it turns him into a crazy monster thing. Maybe the mother box and well, the I ship. Well, I guess they are in the Kryptonian ship when they yeah. do it, but... And he's just, like, walking through the... So I guess it is related, but, yeah. I just wonder well, if it was he so in He's in the ship right now. That's he's not in the Fortress of He's in the ship right now. Which is is the fortress? Well, there is no- yeah, same thing. Yeah, yeah. The closest thing you get to a fortress in this is no, that. I can't is believe that, that it's in this deleted scene. I can't believe I haven't seen this all over the internet. That's crazy. Mutalia wants to know if the Kryptonian embryos inside Superman also got <laughs> resurrected. That's a point. Yeah, because he's got the Codex, right? Good call. Nobody was thinking about that very clearly. Yeah, does he still have that? And they just can't be activated now. I'm pretty sure there's not anything in Man of Steel that, like, makes it to where the Codex isn't still there. Well, anyway, <laughs> we could talk about this all day, and a, a whole lot of it would just be, like, taking a, taking a math quiz that where every answer is needs more information. <laughs> anyway, well, I hope everybody had a good time watching Justice League with us as, as much as you could, and uh, I, I, certainly, uh, I, I certainly enjoyed watching it with you guys more than I did on my own. I mean, I said this was even worse than the viewing I had the other day, but it was more fun watching it with you guys, so... <laughs> Thanks a bunch. Um, a couple other people were saying that in the comments. They're like, well, if I had to watch this, I'd rather do it this way. So thanks. That's the nicest thing anybody's ever said to me. Uh, so DJ and I will be back with you again on Thursday for a Captain Logan show. And then after that, we're going to have uh, Geek Flution After Dark, which we've not done in a few weeks uh, since I have been recovering from surgery. And Brandon will be here for After Dark. And uh, it'll be episode 99 of the Captain Logan show. So next week will be the big 100th episode. Uh, the big spectacular in which we still don't entirely know what we're doing. Although, I have an idea, DJ, and I'll run that Ooh, by you a I'm little excited. bit. Um, I, it's a really dumb oh, idea, though. I'm not a, But I, I think it, so I'm going to ask you about it anyway. DJ, thanks for doing this with yeah, me, buddy. Yeah, sure, man. I, it was fun. <laughs> will, will Dan be around for the After Dark? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Um, He's a little bit more busy now, but but it's possible. Busy I'll Dan. ask him. I'll tell him that, I'll tell him that Brandon specifically... <laughs> asked and well, yeah but he's also like studying for the bar exam and it's stuff like true. that so i just yeah. sent you yeah. anyway box. well more apocalypse you guys are great we really appreciate you and we will see you again for more madness on thursday i was captain logan this is brandon of the grims from the shadows and dj the of the martinez's <laughs> I thought he was stuck i wasn't no, told I'm just is he stuck no, <laughs> bye folks see you, guys. See you later bye. Now you have to push Correct. the button, DJ. <laughs>